To officially begin our program, here is Ms. Therese Lacap to lead us in our prayer. May we request everyone for a moment of silence and let us all put ourselves in the loving presence of God. Let us put ourselves in the loving presence of the Lord as we say, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When I am down, and all oh, my soul so weary, When troubles come in my heart, burdened be. And I am still in here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up so I Stormy seas, I am strong when I am on your shoulders. Embrace me up to more than I can be. No life, no life without. Each restless heart beats so imperfectly. But when you come, I am on your shoulders. And as I play, I glimpse eternity. St. Catherine and St. Dominic, pray for us. Mother Francisca, the Spiritus Santa de Fuentes, intercede for us. Our Dominican prayer, bless us, Lord, that we may be a blessing to others as we praise your name in particular, now and always. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear Shannons, please all rise for the singing of our Philippine National Anthem. Ang Pambansang Awit ng Pilipinas
Good day, Shenans, and, and blessed be God forever. Today, 1st of October 2021, as we celebrate this year's Literacy Month with a the theme, Literacy for a Human-Centered Recovery, Narrowing the Digital Divide, it is my pleasure to introduce Councillor Papa Cruz of Taytay Rizal, a humble faculty member from the English Department. And this is Ms. Christelle Ann Oroso, faculty from the English Department. And of course, our satellite host and game master, Mr. Gabriel De Vela, a Shenan from Grade 11, St. Catherine of Shena, your MCs. Once again, in behalf of all the people who made this event possible, we greet you a blessed day. So this is it. How are you feeling, Sir Papu? Honestly, I'm both nervous and excited. Nervous because whatever the students will show us today will represent how we screen them, but I'm also excited because this is their time to shine and amplify their God-given talents. How about you, Ms. Arroso? How do you feel? I don't feel any pressure right now. Just kidding. I was just reiterating Ms. Janina San Miguel's answer back in 2013 when she joined Binibining Pilipinas. But though I am a bit nervous, I am extremely confident that this program will run smoothly because we have prepared for this, right? And there's no substitute to good preparation, so they say. Yes, what you said is indeed right, Ms. Christelle. There are many instances that we tend to miscommunicate and misrepresent our thoughts because we are nervous. Now I can truly fully comprehend the essence of celebrating Literacy Month every year. We as educators have to make sure that everyone can fully express themselves in a manner that there can be understood. You are indeed correct, Sir Papu. So now, without further ado, let's have the first mental competition we have prepared for you. For you. This game is called Family Feud Literacy Month Edition. The mechanics is easy. Contestants, please listen. This game is based on the iconic American show that started back in 1976. Participants from grade 7 to grade 10 were pre-selected already, and a wheel randomizer was used to determine which team will be an opponent of another team. This game will have three rounds. The first two rounds will be for the elimination, and the last round will be for the finals. The participants must be able to guess the top one answer based on the survey conducted through Google Form. The Google, the group rather, with the highest number of total accumulated points will win the game. Before the first round, leaders from each of the two groups will compete in the first round. The first round must give one answer each according to the first question. Whomever will get the highest number of what the survey says will decide if they will want to play or pass. If the leader who won chose play, each of the group mates will try to guess and provide the top answer of the respondents without coaching. But if within the time limit of two minutes per player that they won't be able to guess the top one answer, the opposing team will have the chance to steal. If the opposing team will be able to provide the top one answer based on the group's consensus, they will win the game. However, if the leader who won will choose pass instead, the chance to guess and provide the top one answer of the respondents will be passed on to the other group. And they can have a chance to steal. If the opposing team will be able to provide a top one answer based on the group's consensus, they will win the game. Round one will take place during the first part of the program. Round two will happen after lunch break. And the final round will take place in the latter part of the program. And now, here's your game master, Mr. Gab De Vela, and let the games begin. All right, thank you for that, Sir Papu and Miss Orozo. Gentle and ladies, Shannons, are you ready for our first game? All right, it's time for the family feud, but let me just remove my shades first because I really can't see anything. <laughs> And now, for the first round of this nerve-wracking game, introducing our first group. Are you guys ready over there on the other side? 
Say hi to our people. You are now live on our Facebook Live. Just wave, guys. Hi, how are you? Let's start with the introductions. All right, I don't think that they are still ready. I think they're still ready for the game, but I think, yeah, they are now waving. That means they are ready to play. But I just still don't know their names. All right, but without further ado, let's start this game for our first question. The leaders of both teams will be answering this. All right, the first one to press the buzzer will have the chance. To be the first to state his or her answer, and the second contestant will also have the chance to state their answers too. Whichever answer will top the board on our answer board will decide who will play and who will pass. All right, are you guys ready now? Just wait for us if you are ready. They are all shy. I can attest to that. <laughs> Are they now complete? Yes, they are. All right, then let us now proceed to our first question. Our first question is What is the easiest lesson that we have had in English? Once again, our first question is, what is the easiest lesson in English that we have had in English? The both of the uh, the, the leaders of the both teams have the chance to answer this question whoever among the two will get the answer of, with the equivalent score with the highest equivalent score will be deciding to uh if they want to play or pass all right are our leaders now ready I think they are. All right, whoever starts the game and presses the buzzer first will have the chance to answer the question first. All right, now, are you ready? Then let's play the game. The first one to raise their hand on the raise hand button on the Zoom will be answering the question first. In five, four, three, two, and one, go! Raise your hand. Are our leaders now ready to give their answers? Who among them, who among the two, raised their hand first? All right, we already have a first opponent. Whoever you are, please state your name when you open your microphone, introduce yourself and your group. There you are. Hi, how are you?
It seems as though there's some technical difficulties, but let us just enjoy this program and just Hello. sit back, relax. All right. Hi. Hi, sir. How are you? All right. We will be doing the family feud later so that we could run smoothly. And I will see, I will see you all later. Sorry for the technical difficulties. We will go back to our family feud in a few moments. But now let us proceed to our next competition, the Grade 4 Pandemic Hero Art and Dance Championship. Thank you, Sir Papu. Now it's time for us to meet the Pandemic Hero Art and Dance Champions who made it this far from Grade 4. Our first champion from Grade 4 Fortitude, advisor, Miss Christine Gongora, English teacher, Ms. Maria Clairol Velos, presenting Carla Isabel Trinidad. Let's give Carla Isabel a virtual round of applause. Unity is strength, division is weakness. So an adage goes, the pandemic has immensely changed our lives in ways beyond our imagination. Being a nine-year-old, suddenly, it is no longer safe for me to go about my usual activities. The same goes to everyone. These questions run in our minds. Is there hope? Will the COVID-19 virus ever go away? Young as we are, voices may be small. We have to look into the hero that lives in each and every one of us. How? The government has implemented safety protocols. Let's obey and be good role models to others. An example of the proper wearing of face masks and shields whenever we need to leave our homes. To keep our family safe, we must always stay at home Observe proper hygiene by constantly washing our hands and taking our regular baths. Keeping our homes clean is also a must. Boosting our immune system will make our body strong to keep the virus at bay. Eating healthy and nutritious food, daily intake of vitamins, exercising regularly, and getting enough sleep. We also have to keep our community safe. Our respective barangays must be strict in implementing safety protocols. For our part, we have to abide by the said rules. Gatherings and being in crowds should be avoided at all times. With our conscious efforts in keeping our families and communities safe, we will be able to rise above this difficult situation. Altogether, we must be proactive in looking after each other's safety and welfare. We must light up the path that gives hope in putting an end to this pandemic. After all, we yearn to see the beauty of the world again in God's perfect time. I am Carla Trinidad and I am a pandemic hero of Chenna College of Taitai. Let's give Carla Isabel a round of applause for her wonderful performance. All right. Now it seems that Carla Isabel is a really great speaker, right? Now... Let us proceed first with an icebreaker. But before we do that, let me guys do a shout out first to our viewers here that are with us and vibing with us here on our official Facebook Live on Shanda College of Taitai official Facebook page. All right. Hi to 
Jan Denver Claude Rehensha. Hi to you there. Arwin Hinojosa, if I am not mistaken. And there you have it. Rikaila Dimla, how are you? Hi to you too. Raf Dinglasan, hi. And Sam Amago. And that those kinds of comments are really giving us the excitement to do this more often, you know, guys. So now, without further ado, let's proceed to our second game. Or maybe our first game, since our first game has been postponed. But we will be doing that later because I know that it is one of those games that we are really looking forward to. All right. Our first game slash second game is Mystery Word. So what it is nga ba, Kuya Gab? All right. In the Mystery Word. For this game, we will give chance to our viewers, you guys, to be with us and participate in our culminating activity. All right, ladies and gentle Shannons, this is the mechanics of the games. In this game, I will be presenting a video of a word with jumbled letters. You guys have to solve the puzzled word and type down your answers on the comment box in our live stream. Remember that you will only have one minute to type down your answers. And the first one to send their answer will get the prize. That will be sent to your Gcash account. Yes, you heard me right. That means the prize for this is money. Ha! Cha-ching, baby. And now, before we proceed, before I show you the first word, let me just tell you how you should answer on the comment section. I will be sending a format. I will, and you just, you guys have to just type it down there, just like how I used. I will be sending it now in five, four, three, two, one. Included in it is your name, grade, and section. Then put down your answer with the hashtags. Our official hashtags are hashtag SCT literacy, hashtag SCT 2021 literacy month. And hashtag narrowing the digital divide. All right, are you now guys ready for our first mystery word for this game? Our players would be the grade 11 students in our comment section. All right, you guys, all of you have the chance to answer this question. I hope that you would answer it correctly because if you don't, none. If you don't, then don't. <laughs> All right. But I won't waste any more time. Let's proceed to our first mystery word. Grade 11 students, be ready. You only have one minute to answer this. Our first mystery word is... There it is. Whatever it is, it means that do you know someone? Or let me use it in a sentence. Do you know someone is gullible or willing to believe things without proof? Use this word to describe this character trait. All right? That is our first clue. And that is our only clue for this word. You only have 25 seconds left. Guys, type down your answers the way I type down mine on the comment section. All right, last two and one. That is one minute that's one minute see you tomorrow <laughs> all right i am now going to reveal our first mystery word our first mystery word is credulity all right credulity Example, he had a tendency to believe everything he read online. And this credulity got him into trouble when he tried to discuss politics with his in-laws. That 
ladies and gentle Shannons, is our first mystery word. I am curious who won our first mystery word, but we will announce that later. For now, Sir Papu and Miss Orozo, back to you. Thank you very much, Gab. Miss Christelle, were you able to get our first mystery word? Actually, I was able to get it, but since we are not part of the competition, we are not allowed to join in the comment section. So good luck to our Facebook Live watchers. Keep on posting your answers for a chance to win. And now, we shall proceed with our next contestant from Grade 4 Prudence, advisor Miss Agnes Domingo, English teacher, Miss Maria Claro Velus. Our next pandemic hero, art and dance champion, is Zyril Madeline Pareño. Two of the easiest ways to prevent spreading COVID-19 to the family is by washing our hands regularly and thoroughly and by covering our mouth and nose when we cough or sneeze. Since my mom is a nurse, whenever she comes home, she takes a shower to get rid of all the germs and bacteria before she hugs us. Having good hygiene works for our family really well. Along with having good hygiene, I eat lots of vegetables and fruits to keep me healthy. Remember that prevention is better than cure. The nutrients and vitamins we get from healthy food keep us from getting sick by boosting our immune system and fighting harmful bacteria. The best way to be safe during the pandemic is to get vaccinated. Getting any brand of vaccine is better than not getting vaccinated at all. The vaccine helps protect us from the harsh effect of COVID-19 to our bodies. Adults who get vaccinated also help protect kids like us who cannot get the vaccines yet because of all the ways my family and I do to keep everyone safe. I can proudly say that I am a pandemic hero of Shana College of Taitai. Zyril Madeline is no doubt one of the champions in this competition. Let's put our hands together for Zyril. Back to you, Gab. All right. Thank you for that, Miss Orozo and Sir Papu. Let me just give my round of applause to, to Zyril. All right, congratulations to you. And now, for our second mystery word. Yeah. That fast. Mystery word again. Of course, that's why we love you. That's how much we love you all. Without further ado, let's proceed to our second mystery word. And what would that be? Do, do you guys have any, you know, uh, ideas about what could it be? Well, let's just leave that for you to ponder. And for this mystery word, our grade 12 students has the chance, have the chance to answer the question and solve the mystery word. All right? Okay. Before I proceed to the mystery word, our winner for the first mystery word that is credulity is Mr. Irvin Ang from 11 St. Vincent Ferrer. And congratulations to you, Vincent. No, Irvin Ang. I hope that you are enjoying our Facebook Live here at the Literacy Month eSpeech Festival 2021. Now, our second mystery word. This is for the grade 12 students. 
just like the same mechanics that we had earlier, the same format that is pinned on the comment section by the official SCT page on the comment section on the FB Live. That's how you are supposed to type down your answers. All right. This is now our second mystery word. Grade 12, get ready. You have one minute to type down your answers. Whoever gets the answer within one minute first, he or she will be the winner. Our second mystery word is there you have it you have one minute to answer this to give you a clue use this word great adjective to describe someone or something that is great company you know i am a great company you have to bring me all the time yeah that is a fact. <laughs> you still have 30 seconds. No. Last 15 seconds, ladies and gentle Shannons. Your time is running out. You have to run faster. Run. <laughs> And time's up. All right. That is our second mystery word. I will now be revealing the correct answer. Is there someone who answered already on the comment section? I hope there is someone. This is the correct answer for our second mystery word. And it's not showing up. Let me re redo it again. But the correct answer for this one is... Actually, it's just an easy word. And yeah, it talks about how great company a person is. And that, you know, you can depend on me if you want that. <laughs> Alright, our first word. Our second mystery word is... There it is. Convivial. All right. Our second mystery word is convivial. Congratulations, whoever you who won. It is, uh, to give an example, as the evening wore on, the atmosphere at the cafe become more convivial with people breaking off into small groups for conversation. All right. That is the end of our second mystery word. All right. Ladies and gentle Shannons, just sit tight. Don't worry because we have more mystery words to offer you later. All right? You don't, all of you will have a chance. All of you, more than 2,000 students. No, but yeah, many, there will be many more mystery words later. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Sit tight and enjoy the program. Back to the studio. Hi Mars! You know what? Today I have learned so many informations about Greek literature. Mars! Informations? I don't think that's correct. Is the word informations correct and acceptable? Let's find out. The word information is considered as uncountable noun, which means that you cannot have two, three, or four information. So it is neither singular nor plural. Instead of saying, I have learned so many informations, just simply say, I have learned a lot of information. 
the correct form will always be information without S. Avoid saying or using informations. Just say some information, a piece of information, or a lot of information. I hope you have learned something from this video. Happy Literacy Month! Thank you to our very talented Game Master, Gab. And to our equally talented TikToker, Miss Belhira. Did you like her TikTok video? You can see it. If you follow the TikTok page of our English department. And uh, we would like to remind everyone that at any moment within the show, there will be clues, literary clues that you will be using in the latter part of our program. And now, with pride, but without pre prejudice, grant me the privilege to present to you in no particular order the top three best readers in the grade five level. From grade five patients, Riley Antoinette Ignacio, advisor, Mr. Gardner Sanita, English teacher, yours truly. The Summer Cabin by Judy Eberhardt. School was out, and the Johnson family was getting ready to take their annual summer trip to Lake Horizon. Betsy and her brother Bruce were excited, but not Mom and Dad. I wonder why Mom and Dad are not excited about going to the lake, Betsy asked Bruce. I heard Mom and Dad talking last night, and they were saying how much repair the summer cabin needed because it is getting old said Bruce. They are thinking about selling it, but it needs a lot of work. Selling it? exclaimed Betsy. That would be horrible. The next day, Bruce had an idea. What if we help mom and dad paint, pull the weeds, and scrub the deck? asked Bruce. Then the cabin wouldn't look so bad, and we can probably keep it. Betsy thought it was a great idea. They decided to tell mom and dad their plan. That sounds like it would work, said Dad. With some nice rust paint, the cabin would look really nice. We could plant new shrubs and flowers out front too, said Mom. That night, they went to the local hardware store and bought the supplies they would need to start working on the cabin. They left early the next morning and were at the cabin before lunch. They started painting the small kitchen first then the bedrooms, and finally, the family room. Wow, said mom. This looks like a brand new cabin. After a day of painting, the following day was spent cleaning the deck by mom and dad. The kids worked on the pulling of weeds and planted some new flowers of red and white around the maple tree. After two days of hard work, mom and dad agreed that the cabin was now looking so much better. Dad told mom a new refrigerator would do the trick in the kitchen. With a few more minor changes, this cabin would really look great, said dad. Does that mean you won't sell it? asked Betsy. That's right, said dad. Thanks to your great idea, we can keep our summer cabin. Tomorrow, we are saving for swimming in the lake, said mom. No work. The kids cheered and everyone was now happy to be at Lake Horizon. The end. Thank you. Look at that. Can you believe she was just a grade five student? Indeed. And I think we have our first clue. I think you should be able to see clearly what our first clue was. So you have to check every time for the next clue. Now, for the second exceptional reader, let me do the honor of presenting to you Sabrina Lois Aguilar from Grade 5 Modesty, advisor and English teacher, Miss Crystal Ann Oroso. 
The Three Wishes. Once there lived the woodcutter with his wife. He cut wood in the forest and sold them in the market. One day, he went to cut wood in the forest and found a very big tree. He thought of cutting the whole tree to get more wood. As the woodcutter picked up his axe to cut the tree, he heard a voice. Please do not cut this tree. The woodcutter stopped and looked here and there, but found no one. He again picked his axe and aimed at the tree, but he heard the same voice again. Please be kind to me. Do not cut this tree. The woodcutter again stopped and looked around, but he still could not find anyone. Then a fairy spoke from the tree. I am a fairy, and I live in this tree. If you cut this tree, I'll be homeless. Please do not destroy my home. I will give you three wishes instead. The woodcutter was very happy. He accepted the fairy's offer and ran to his house to tell his wife about it. He told his wife about the tree and the tree fairy. We can wish for a real house with many windows, said the woodcutter. Or even a tall castle, said his wife. We can wish for a cart and a goat to pull it, said the woodcutter. Or even a shining carriage with white horses, said his wife. They talked for a long time. They thought of many wishes. At last, the woodcutter grew hungry. The woodcutter said, I am hungry. Give me something to eat. His wife said, Since you came home early, I have not prepared anything till now, but I am hungry. I wish I had a nice piece of sausage right now, said the woodcutter. Clatter bump, clatter bang. A loud noise came from the chimney, and down fell a great long piece of sausage onto the floor. Oh, what a fool you are, shouted the woodcutter's wife. You have wasted a wish. Only a fool would have wished for just one sausage. Oh dear, so I have. You are right. I'm sorry, said the woodcutter. The woodcutter's wife continued to scold him. At last, the poor woodcutter could stand no more. Stop, he cried. I do not want to hear any more about the sausage. I wish that the sausage was stuck to your nose. And so it was. The great long piece of sausage was stuck to the end of the woodcutter's wife's nose. The woodcutter's wife pulled on the sausage. It did not come off. The woodcutter pulled on the sausage. It stayed where it was. The woodcutter and his wife pulled together. They pulled and pulled until they were tired. Pulling did no good at all. The great long piece of sausage was still stuck to the woodcutter's wife's nose. Do something, said the woodcutter's wife. You have one wish left. The woodcutter looked hard at his wife's nose. It's not so very bad. I could get used to it. If we had a whole barrel of gold, I think I could get used to it, he said. But I am sure that I could not, cried the woodcutter's wife. And so the woodcutter had to use his last wish. I wish that the sausage would come off from your nose, the woodcutter said. Plop! The great long piece of sausage fell from the woodcutter's wife's nose. It landed on a white dish that was on the table. The woodcutter looked at the sausage. The woodcutter's wife looked at the sausage. It is time for supper now, she said. We might as well eat the sausage right away.
And that is what they did. Thank you, Riley Antoinette Ignacio from Grade 5 Patients. That was a wonderful oratorical reading. We would like to apologize for the switching of the two videos. And now, just like my first two students, this is one, this one for sure will make me proud as well. Here is Rihanna Mendoza from Grade 5 Providence, advisor, Ms. Marites Baralin. Potatoes, eggs, and coffee beans. Once upon a time, a daughter complained to her father that her life was miserable and that she didn't know how she was going to make it. She was tired of fighting and struggling all the time. It seemed just as one problem was solved, another one soon followed. Her father, a chef, took her to the kitchen. He filled three pots with water and placed each one on a high fire. Once the three pots began to boil, he placed potatoes in one pot, eggs in the second pot, and ground coffee beans in the third pot. He then let them sit and boil without saying a word to his daughter. The daughter moaned and impatiently waited, wondering what he was doing. After 20 minutes, he turned off the burners. He took the potatoes out of the pot and placed them in a bowl. He pulled the eggs out and placed them in a bowl. He then ladled the coffee out and placed it in a cup. Turning to her, he asked, Daughter, what do you see? Potatoes, eggs, and coffee, she hastily replied. Look closer, he said, and touched the potatoes. She did, and noted that they were soft. He then asked her to take an egg and break it. After pulling off the shell, she observed the hard-boiled egg. Finally, he asked her to sip the coffee. Its rich aroma brought a smile to her face. Father, what does this mean? She asked. He then explained that the potatoes, the eggs, and the coffee beans had each faced the same adversity, the boiling water. However, each one reacted differently. The potato went in strong, hard and unrelenting, but in the boiling water, it became soft and weak. The egg was fragile with thin outer shell protecting its liquid interior until it was put in the boiling water. Then the inside of the egg became hard. However, the ground coffee beans were unique. After they were exposed to the boiling water, they changed the water and created something new. Which are you? He asked his daughter. When adversity comes knocking on your door, how do you respond? Are you a potato, an egg, or a coffee bean? Potatoes, eggs, and coffee beans. Thank you very much, Rihanna Mendoza from Grade 5, Providence. Now we have another game for you, and we will turn you over to our Game Master. Take it away, Gab. All right. Hello again. It's your boy, Gab, 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 Gabby. It's your boy, really. <laughs> Nuno all around. Now, you know what? I've been reading some comments here, and they are saying that they, they were... Uh, they were regretting that they haven't watched Peppa Pig when they were still young. Actually, we have the same wish. <laughs> uh, when I was a child, I really don't know how to speak in English. Really. Yeah. And that was kind of a harsh era for me. But now, you know, practice makes perfect, as they say. So now, this is our next game. And this is what we call Rebus. What is a rebus, all right? So in this game, I will be showing on my background, just like what I did earlier, a video containing a riddle or a puzzle made up of letters, pictures, or symbols 
whose names sound like the parts or symbols of a word or phrase. All right, I guess you guys have uh, a clue about what this Rebus game would be all about. But, you know, I won't be wasting any more time. So, because I really am excited to do this. You know, this is one of those literary games that I really want to play when I was a child, but I just can't really answer. And now, our first game, our first Rebus. This is for everybody, all right? Anyone who wants to answer, who wants to participate on this, could type down their answers on the comment section. And there we also have the format like we had earlier, all right? Now, without further ado, our first Rebus word. Again, you have one minute to answer this. Our first rebus word is. There you have it. You have one minute, guys, to answer this. To know what this rebus word is. All right. This is actually one of those easiest rebus uh, riddles that I've ever encountered. And I know that you could answer this one. All right, last 35 seconds. The timer is running and I am sipping. <laughs> I get to have a chance, you know, to make a rhyme. All right, last 20 seconds. After this, I will be doing a shout out so that you would be acknowledged in our live. Last 10 seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Ten, 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 ten. Wow. <laughs> I have my own SFX in my mouth. All right. Our first rebus. The first answer is. Are you guys ready now? Okay. It seems that many of you corrected, uh, answered this correct, but only the first one who submitted. And type down his or her answer will win. All right. Our answer is one in a million. Congratulations. There we have it. Our first rebus. And back to the studio. Touch Gab. I hope you got the answer one million, but I would hope that someday we can give one million as your prize. I agree with you, sir. And for me, Rebus is one of the most exciting English, English um, activities uh, we as English educators have used in our lessons. And we have some more words for you at the latter part of our program. But first, Ms. Christelle. Yes, thank you, Sir Papu. And without further ado, let's proceed to the next part of the program, the storytelling competition. Of course, Miss. And now, grant me the power to introduce our well-credited judges for this competition. They are the faculty members of English Department. Please welcome Sir Jude Kabading. Jude Santos. Also a faculty member of the English Department. And... The Chairman of the Board of Judges, Ms. Teresa Agana. Be having a hard time today, I'm sure. I agree with you, sir. Thank God we are not one of the judges. And now, let us call on the contestant number one, Alia May Mariano from Grade 6, Courage. Her advisor is Ms. Jonna May De La Cruz. The Mister and His Gold 
by Aesop. There once was an old miser who lived in a house with a garden. The old miser used to hide all his golden coins under stones in his garden. Every night before he went to bed, the miser went out into his garden to count his coins. He continued the same routine every day, but he never spent a single golden coin. One day, a thief saw the old miser hiding his coins. Once the old miser went back to his house, the thief went to the hiding place and took all the gold. The following day, as the old man came out to count his coins, he found out it was gone and started wailing loudly. His neighbor heard the cries and came running, asking what had happened. Upon learning what had occurred, the neighbor asked, Why didn't you just save the money inside your house where it would have been safe? The neighbor continued, Having it inside the house would make it easier to access when you need to buy something. Buy something? I was never going to spend my gold. When hearing this, the neighbor picked up the stone and threw it. Then he said, If that's the case, then save the stone. It is as ruthless as the gold you've lost. I would like to apologize for the wrong advisor. The advisor of Six Courage is Sir Wilkins de Jesus. I was completely swayed by Aliyah's presentation. Let's give her a round of applause. And now, let's go back to the Rebus Word Game. Gab? Hi, Miss and Sir again. How are you both? I hope that you are both doing good there. <laughs> All right, now we will now proceed to our mystery, no, Rebus Games. And this one is open for all, just like the other one we had earlier. Because we love you. Because hashtag China cares. All right, before I proceed to our next Rebus Word Game, let me announce first our winners for the second mystery word and the first Rebus. Our winner for the second mystery word, though that word is convivial, is get ready your GCash account. <laughs> it is Chris Jericho de la Paz from 12 Travel Services. Congratulations! All right, and for our Rebus first game, our winner is Kim. Punong Bayan from 8 Technology Competent. Congratulations to the both of you. Let me give you my warmest round of applause. All right. Let us now proceed to our next Rebus game. Just like I promised earlier, there will be more. Just like this one. Same mechanics, guys. You have one minute to type down your answer. I will be showing the video on my back just like what i did earlier all right are you now ready but before we do that let me do some shout out first hi to ryle navarro hi how are you to brian Pejorada, to gabriel season hi to you steven barrow uh Haley reyes christian james out there and many more to all of you congrats uh just stay tuned there and watch our program and Join us on every games that we have prepared for all of you. Our second rebus word is Here we go. You have one minute to answer this one. 
All right. I don't actually, this one is kind of, you know, very difficult to answer. Well, I can't even answer it on my part. But I know you can because, you know, Shannons are really intelligent. What? Yes, I know that you are. And you have 30 seconds left to give and type down your answers on the comment section. All right. I hope that you guys are enjoying the games that our teachers have prepared for you this Literacy Month eSpeech Festival 2021 with the hashtag Literacy SCT 2021 Literacy Month and the theme narrowing the digital divide. And your time is up. That ends our first Rebus word, but that's not where it ends really. <laughs> Our answer for the first, second, second Rebus word is. Did you guys get the correct answers? Oh, some of you got it. All right, here it is. Ladies and gentle shenanigans. Our answer is. Ta -na -na -ta -na! Congratulations! The correct answer is library. The correct answer is library. Whoever got the correct answer for this one, I am really proud of you. Keep it going. <laughs> Keep it up and later we will be announcing the winner. Once again, I am Gab. And back to the studio. Thank you, Gab. Miss Christelle, did you get that library? With your help, I was with your help, I was able to identify the answer to the rebus. Congrat recent rebus. Congratulations to those who got it correct and be prepared. Words are becoming more exciting and exciting. Indeed, Sir Papu. And now may I present to you our second contestant. Are you Inigo Burgos, still from Grade Six Courage, advisor, Mr. Wilkins De Jesus? Pandemic by Are you Inigo D. Burgos? I am 11 years old boy. Suddenly, our daily routine was changed by the pandemic. We are all caught of guard. Everything changed. Schooling is now homeschooling. Work is also work from home. No mauling, no eating out, and we can even visit our relatives and friends. Masks, facials, sanitizers, alcohol, disinfectant sprays, and vaccines are now necessities. Fear is embracing us. Everyone is stressed out. We have to remember this. God said, fear not for I am with you. You see how our wonderful God is for assuring us that he will be there for us to protect and will not leave us. This pandemic taught us to be more appreciative of vital help we get and to be thankful to the men and women who are serving our country up to now. Yes, we are on the lockdown, but our lives will end there. We have to be hopeful, happy, and strong for our sanity's sake. It will pass at the right time when God permits. But, despite of this negativity, I can still see random acts of kindness everywhere. Rich and poor are all participating. Well, in our small community, neighbors, friends, and strangers show unexpected sweet gestures to one another, like sharing food, Supporting small businesses, encouraging one another, and most of all, we became prayerful. We are acknowledging that there is God, and we believe that He alone can make this pandemic go away. I say this again. This is the time to be kind and caring, and to trust our known future to the one up there. We see, this pandemic brought us closer to our families, to value friendship, value happiness, value health, value life, and value our faith. This is not the time to be sad, to be lonely, to complain and be bad. Love, love, love is our good defense. 
if there is not comes and times. For now, I am blessed to see my loved ones alive and well, and savor every moment with them. I hope your friends value your family and loved one as well. Thank you. Pandemic by Arjunigo B. Burgos. Ario Inigo is equally good as our first contestant. Let's put our hands together for him. And now we have another Rebus word game for you, Gab. Hi again. What's up, Shannon? I hope that you're still with us here on our face on our official Facebook Live. All right. Let me announce first our winner for our first. Is that our first? Actually, it's our second. It was our second. Our second reboss game. The winner is. Well, I don't have my SFX. I'm crying. But then. Yeah. Our winner is. Dana. Di mapasok from six service something from six service. Congratulations to you, Dana. Di mapasok. You are the winner for our second rebus game. And now, our third one. Let us now proceed. You know, I've been. I really been. I've. I was really reading your comments, and yeah, these children. You know, they're all great. I was like that too when I was a child. I did literary competitions, you know, like uh, there was, I forgot the literary piece, but yeah, I did that back then. And I'm oversharing. And that that is what we call in, the, in Tagalog, share ko lang. <laughs> okay. Our third rebus is get ready. One minute starts now what do you think the answer is for this one i don't know the answer for this one this one is quite tricky you know i hope that you could answer this while we're at it, shout out to our lovely friends, our lovely Shannons that are here with us. And we still have 20 seconds left. Shout out to Courtney Sophia and Karil Celeste. How are you both there? Hope you're doing fine. And to our other students. Just sit tight and relax. Five seconds. Three, two, one. And... Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, that means time's up. Our answer for this rebus is... Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Heart to heart. Ooh, heart to heart. I like that. All right. And that's it for our third rebus. I hope that you enjoyed this game. There will be more. Just stay tuned. And I will be right back. And I hope that you won't get tired of my face. All right. Sir Papu and Miss Orozo, back to you. Thank you, Gab. I'm sure because our Shannons are good in using singular and plural, maybe they thought it was heart to hearts. But in this Rebus game, you can tweak the rules so that we can have the games and we can have the words. Uh, we can play with words during yes, the Rebus indeed, game. Yes, sir, because it is a logical game. Naman po. Now the participants are so good in keeping our attention with their absolutely entertaining stories. I agree with you, Sir Papu. We just can't get enough of their wonderful stories. Thank God we still have another performer. 
May we call on contestant number three, still from grade six courage advisor, Mr. Wilkins De Jesus. Let's welcome Isabel Adisha Dumaraos. Hi, do you want to hear a story? I will tell a story and the title is Arascaldo by Trinidad Guevara. In a small barrio in Bulacan, Nana Geli lives alone. She is widow and childless, but kind-hearted woman. All the neighbors, young and old alike, respect and love her for her goodness and kindness. She is always ready to serve or help others anytime. One day, the skinny child of a poor neighbor knocks at her door and ask for something to eat. The child was very hungry. So, Nana Geli hits the remaining arascaldo, which is porridge with some chicken meat. She serves it in a bowl. The child thanks Nana Geli for the satisfying bowl of arascaldo. After many years, Nana Geli becomes very sick. <coughs> she needs an operation, but she doesn't have enough money to pay the hospital bills. Suddenly, the nurse comes into her room and tells her that she can go home because her hospital bills have already been paid in full. The nurse then hands her a note that says, All hospital bills have already been paid with a bowl of arascaldo. It is signed by Dr. De La Rosa. Nana Geli is full of joy and remembers the arascaldo she once shared with a skinny boy in her neighborhood who is now a doctor. The End so always remember, do good for others. It will come back to you in unexpected ways. Did you like the story? Thank you for listening. Thank you, Isabel, for that incredible storytelling. Let's give her a round of applause as well. And to say that our three contestants are all great is an understatement. Let us just leave the decision to our judges. But I'm sure the winner will be an advisory class of Sir Wilkins de Jesus. <laughs> Gab, are you there? We have our Nick, our next Rebus game. Yes, sir. I'm here, still here, alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. And now, without further ado, let me announce first our winner for our previous Rebus. And that would be Benedict Magtinghua. Magtinghua from STEM 1. Congratulations to you. You are the winner of the Rebus Heart to Heart. And now, our next rebus is, again, guys, you have one minute to answer this, all right? In five, four, three, two, one, and here we go. What do you think the answer for that one is? This one is quite, you know, maybe it's easy because... I already know the answers. Ha! Privileges of a game master. Ha <laughs> ha! But I know that you could guess this one. I know that you could. I have faith in you. Just like what Abba says on their song. I still have faith in you. Alright, you still have 30 seconds left. 
Type down your answers and don't forget our format. And last five seconds, four, three, two, one, and time's up. Our answer for this one is, Dun bam, grow old, want to grow old with you, <laughs> Knox. All right, and just like Isabella Dumarao said earlier, do unto others. Do good unto others. And, and because of that, Shena does that too. That's why we still have more and many Rebus games for you later. Because we want to do good unto all of Shenans. And I will be right back again later for more. Back to the studio. Sir Papu and Sir Miss, I, Miss Orozo, how are you two? Thank you, Gab. Your word games are increasingly exciting. Did you get that, Miss Oroso? Yes. Um, the answer. Can, can we spill them the answer already? Uh, maybe later. Okay. Okay. So I'd like to do a shout out to my students, uh, PR2 students of Yums 1 and Yums 2. Shout out to you. How about you? Miss Castell. Thank you, Sir Papu. I would also like to shout out to my students from grade 5 modesty and all my students in grade 8 as well who are showing their support. So let us now not prolong the agonizing apprehension of our contestants. This time, we are about to witness the senior high school as they flaunt their cleverness and mind-boggling perception about the theme of this year's Literacy Month. The final contestants of this impromptu speech competition went through elimination last September 28, 2021, judged by the following faculty members. Jedrick John Felaris, a faculty member from Math... Math... Math Department, Mr. Jude Patrick Abading, a faculty member from the English Department, and yours truly, Miss Crystal Ann Oroso. And today, for the final round, we have the following judges. Mr. Giancarlo Arciwas, IBED Principal, Miss Mercedes Santos, faculty member from the English Department, to be represented by Sir Wilkins de Jesus, also a member of the English Department, and Ms. Maria Concepcion Cruz, Subject Area Coordinator of the English Department. Thank you, judges. Take your medicine for headache. And now let me present to you the first finalist from grade 11, ABM St. Rose of Lima. Advisor, Mr. Ruben Tirados. Please welcome, Carl Sebastian Hardin.
Hello, good morning. Um, my name is Carl Sebastian Hardin. I am from ABM 11 St. Joseph Lima. I'm 17 years old and I love to try new things. Hello, good morning. Um, my name is Carl Sebastian Hardin. I am from ABM 11 St. Joseph Lima. Um, I would like to pick letter E from CARES. What moves should the Department of Education do in order to solve illiteracy problems of many school-aged children, especially in this time of pandemic? Um, for me, the Department of Education should focus on um, school school teaching. For example, they should like help parents give modules to parents to help children talk about literacy to help them develop their literacy. DEPED may, may give modules to different people to different parts of the world, especially in rural areas or where isolated areas where not a lot of people have access to education, to technology, or to any internet or to any internet supplier. Um, my opinion is that they would, that they should give modules that will be easy to teach to other children and practice um, practice outreach programs in different areas. Teach for like every every month, there would be teachings in gymnasiums in public areas or in um, or in maybe anywhere that they can go, anywhere that they can teach, anywhere that they can spread their they can spread their knowledge to children. With this um, children will slowly begin to learn how to how to speak. They would, and when they learn how to speak, they would be able to pass it on to their children and to the next and to the next. They, this could go on for decades, and they could go for decades, years if they just pass it on. And for me, that that is the best way that Deaf Ed would be able to teach to solve the literacy problem in the pandemic. They could give out modules and they could do outreach programs that would help children, especially in the isolated areas. And I thank you. Good morning, my name is Sophia Alexa, and I am from grade 11 ABM St. Rose of Lima. I am a 16-year-old girl, an inquisitive person, and I love to read and write. I 
Letter A from CARES was already selected by Carl Sebastian Hardin. Kindly choose another letter. I choose letter A from China. Okay, so Alexa, this is your question. What can you suggest to the next president of the Philippines to address literacy for human-centered recovery? Again, for the second time, Alexa, your question is, what can you suggest to the next president of the Philippines to address literacy for human-centered recovery? Good luck, Alexa. You may now give your answer. Literacy for all, not only for the privileged. Greetings to everyone. My name is Sofia Alexa Rabat Yacomaral, and I am from Grade 11 ABM St. Rose of Lima. The next president should be the one is, who is compassionate, driven, and has an open mind and ears for everyone. Literacy is very important for everyone, especially the students. Especially for the students, the parents. The, and the teachers that are now struggling in the middle of this pandemic. And now that we are in a pandemic, everyone is struggling with their works, their lives, on how they can survive in this, in this conflict that we are facing right now. Those who are privileged and underprivileged are not the ones, those who are privileged are the ones who suffer, are the ones who doesn't suffer, and the, those who are underprivileged are the ones who suffer due to the illiteracy and the lack of knowledge through different technology and different aspects in our lives. For the next president, I would love to suggest that he or she may listen to his people and to improve different organizations in the Philippines. to support different businesses and charities that support people who are underprivileged. That's all, thank you. I can't actually believe how fast our contestant number two our contestant number two's brain works given the time pressure. Let us put our hands together for our contestant number two. And now, here is our third finalist from grade 12, Humes 2, advisor, Mr. John Patrick Antona. Please welcome Lorenzo Gabriel Manintim. Lorenzo? except for the two A's. Good morning, dear Shannons. My name is Lorenzo Manimtim of 12 Humes 2, and I believe that speaking is the powerful except force. Except for the two A's. Good morning, dear Shannons. My name is Lorenzo Manimtim of 12 Humes 2, and I believe that speaking is a powerful Except force. For the two A's. Well then, 
I choose letter E for cares. Morning, dear Shen. As we gradually meet, Good morning, everyone. I believe that the nation's future is decided by the generations of this nation. So, what projects must be implemented? Cultural organization to address the literacy and digital divide of the citizens and its member nations. UNESCO, as it sends, is a part of United Nations that aims to have security and peace to all nations in the world. It is established in November 6, 1946, in London. And so what illiteracy, um, so, and so what projects must be implemented by the UNESCO? As I research, the best goal is to promote, um, in, this, uh, in this COVID pandemic, is to promote the going back of schools of the students. Next is the training of teachers regarding the digital skills and technology, and of course, Lastly, the motivation and, of course, the inspiration that we should give to all teachers in the world. Because education is a right and literacy is the foundation of all learning. It is the discovery and, of course, it is empowerment. As a United Nations branch, it is important for UNESCO to implement many projects that regards the continuation of education for the world provide innovation, evolution, and of course, to provide the better needs for the future. As the path for the future generation is the proper management and leadership of its nation. And for the Philippines, I would suggest that the government should, that the government should not neglect the education system of our country. Do not prioritize personal needs over your personal interest and use it for the people instead. There are many issues, social issues that are happening in the country right now. And I say that it is very disappointing as a citizen of this country. I am, I am going to register as a voter and I will say that the government should follow the protocols, the UNESCO projects about education. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that education is the only treasure that can never be stolen. We must continue this. We must be the new generations and we must never neglect what illiteracy means for this will decide the future of our nation, of our country, and of our citizens. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to end this speech with a saying from Dr. Rosario that the destiny of this nation lies within the hands of its future generation. Thank you, Lorenzo. As we gradually meet our impromptu contestants, I guess the judge's situation is now on fire. Thank you to our first three participants. And now, what's next, Ms. Rosa? I highly agree with you, Ms. Christel. And with that being said, now is the perfect time to introduce our remaining final contestants for the impromptu speech competition finals. Contestant number four is from grade 11 STEM, St. Catherine of Shena, advisor, Ms. Daisy Anis. Let us put our hands together for Andrea Eunice Bago. Andrea Eunice Tibago, and I'm from the section of St. Catherine. I am a new student, and this is my first time joining a competition, especially for impromptu speech.
I would like to choose the letter S from Shanna. What roles do parents have in the literacy development of their children? The roles of the parents for me in the literacy development of their children is that they have to support and teach them how to write or to read. Since reading and writing are very important in the future jobs. Since all the jobs now have books, handbooks, and rules to obey, they have to learn how to read. Writing for reporting and for writing history. Like if you're a historian, you have to write down, you have to write down what happened, what you witnessed. Or if you're a documentary, if you document things. So without reading or writing, then how would a child work? And without the parents knowing how to write or read, then how would the children learn? So it is important for the parents to guide their children to learn how to write and read, especially now, since it's online and not face-to-face. -face. In face-to-face, -face, the teachers can help the children read and write. But now we are in our homes, just having the laptop right in front of us, along with modules or something else like books that were given to you by the school. So if we didn't know how to write or read, then how would we be able to pass or answer the questions given to us? And how would we respond to the questions asked to us in the future, especially in job interviews? Parents have a very important role in the literacy development of their children. So we have to cherish when we are the ones being taught about literacy. And I would like to remind you guys that to trust your parents and to understand why they teach you things and why they are strict with you. That will be all. Thank you. Thank you, contestant number four, Andrea Eunice Bago. Let us put our hands together once again for Andrea for her wonderful sharing of insights. And now, let us welcome our contestant number five from grade 11 STEM, St. Martin de Porres, advisor, Mr. Erlison Lawrence Ognilia. Let us give a round of applause to Julian Ray Ponce. Julian, please select a letter. I choose N from Shannon. What can you propose to SCP or Shana College of Tai Tai in addressing literacy development in the imp implementation of its SAFE program? Thank you. 
As a new student of China College of Taitai, I don't know many things about it. But as I go through my everyday educational life, I notice many things through the schedule, the tasks, and the activities that we do in our school. From my past school, we didn't do activities this much. But in China, I can see that they are putting so much effort in it. They put so much effort to the point that they want to see the talents that each student contains. And from that, I can offer one thing, to continue what they are doing. Because in China, I enjoy every moment of my day. I enjoy many tasks. I enjoy many, many like this. We are having literacy month. And I enjoy it so much since, since I can showcase my talent even though I am first time. And in China, I can say that they don't lack in educational status that much. They show their they show what they can and they give the best of their selves. And I can only say one thing that we students must also appreciate every, every little things that our teachers do. Because without them, it will be so hard for us. Because that had instituted different educational program. Us, we are in the side of online class. And others are in the side of modular system, which is harder than what we do. They are owed to teach themselves and us. We have the teachers that teach us every day and by schedule. And from that, I can say that DepEd did what the best of the, did their best. And I will leave one quote that will inspire every student in our school, that education is the most powerful weapon which we can use to change the world. Thank you. That would be all. So far, I think our judges are now having their most difficult times. Judging these contestants are far from easy. That's why I thank God that I am not one of the judges for today. And now, at long last, our finalist number six for the impromptu speech competition from grade 11 STEM, St. Martin de Porres, advisor, Mr. Erlison Lawrence Agnilia. Let's give a round of applause to Fria Andrea Reyes. Priya, please select a letter. Good morning, everyone. I am Priya Andrea de la Paz Reyes from 11 St. Martin de Porres SEM. And I believe that no matter what happens today, past is past. I choose the letter C, letter C po. I am a DDS and I support the Marcos family in the politics. Okay, okay, calm down. I just said that to get your attention. Don't worry, I am not a DDS or a Marcos supporter. I just want to get your attention to tell you that each and every one of us as a citizen of the Philippines has the right to choose our leaders in the government. Our decision in choosing our leaders is crucial 
for the betterment of our justice system. Speaking of justice, digital divide is a present social justice issue that needs to be addressed as soon as possible. Digital divide causes social isolation of the underprivileged people, resulting in illiteracy of citizens, no matter their social economic status, gender, or age. For a government to function well, a good and dependable leader is also important. And of course, cooperative and wise members enhances the flow. Our present or future president and politicians should be aware of this social justice issue by being selfless and open-minded to the concerns of each citizen to provide genuine solutions. They should put their pride aside and instead be a role model of strategic thinking and action. This act will therefore encourage the other leaders to be responsible, ethical, and civic-minded. For instance, we all know that our former leaders in the government made mistakes that aggravated the problems of digital divide and illiteracy. But if we now choose the right leader that will serve us, that will serve our country with open-mindedness and self-awareness, then he or she will use the past mistakes of our government and use it as a lesson to apply and provide appropriate and beneficial solutions for the betterment of our country. With this, I conclude with a quote by Nitin Noria, communication is the real work of leadership. Thank you. Thank you, contestant number six, Fria Andrea Reyes. And to all our other contestants of this impromptu competition, as early as now, you deserve our warm greetings and congratulations for your bravery of stepping out of the limelight and expressing your thoughts with us all. Thank you, our impromptu contestants. And now we shall proceed to our next competition in line, which is the Hero in Me Championship of the Grade 7 level. The best three performers were selected by our dear English subject area coordinator, Miss Maria Concepcion Cruz. And without further ado, here they are. Participant number one, Charity Lizzie Mejia from grade seven, Marian Devotee. Advisor, Mr. Michael Jason Arada. The youth is the hope of our future. According to Jose Rizal, let me ask you a question. When you hear the word teacher, what is the first thing that comes up in your mind? Sometimes we thought that a teacher's job is simple, just teaching. However, we didn't even notice that a teacher's job wasn't an easy one, especially nowadays. Due to pandemic, life become harder, a lot of adjustments and patience. But what are the things that I wanted to do for my students? Teaching wasn't easy at all. Nevertheless, what is the most special of it? It is filled with time, patience, and perseverance. Finding and searching ways to deliver lessons to each student, trying our best to make the lesson understandable. Also for them to remember those lessons in their journey aiming to reach out their character, their personality, is the most important thing in part of teaching. Because I believe that a great student wasn't defined by his or her grades, but by his 
or her personality and characteristic. And when the time comes that my students are already successful, your teacher have a brief message to all of you. Don't let professionalism change your characteristic. Thank you. Thank you, contestant number two. Oh, that's our contestant number one. Michael Jason Aradas Advisi, uh, Charity Lisi Mejia. And now, our contestant number two is Mitu Okamoto from Grade 7 Service Oriented, Advisor Miss Queen Jonah Dinoso. Let's give a round of applause for Mitu. The Hero in Me by Mio Di Okamoto. Some choose heroes who are fictional characters, others who are national heroes, and most of them choose a special person in their lives. I specifically chose my family. Regardless of what others say, I will shower my family with only love and care. I have parents who show me how much they love and appreciate a person with respect. They'd always be concerned about others' health, and they'd constantly try their best to understand one's feelings, even if they're in the wrong. They'd treat them as if they were some sort of superior person. Regardless of how upset they are at someone, they'd still take care of them and provide them with their needs. Or they just make them smile. You know, I aspire to be like that. I am willing to be completely selfless towards a group of people. I am willing to respect them. Throughout my life, my family has been showing me attributes of a leader. A lot of people think that being a hero requires you to save someone. But in my opinion, it's not just that. To be a hero, one has to put others before themselves. You know, I want to inspire others as well. I want them to look at me and think, Wow, she's so kind. I want to be as kind as her. However, for now, I'm still learning from my family. Yes, we may go through difficulties and even arguments, but in the end, I still look, for I still look forward to how great of a person my family is. Because my family is my hero. Thank you, Mitu, for that wonderful presentation. We stand to be corrected. Contestant number one, Charity Lizzie Mejia from grade seven, from grade seven, from the section seven charity, is an advisory, uh, is from the advisory class of Miss Reggie Cruz. And our contestant number two, Mitu Okamoto, is from grade seven, Marian Devotee, an advisory class of Mr. Jason Arada. And for our final contestant, for the Hero in Me Championship, let us put our hands together as we welcome Maria Ann Nugid. What does it take to be a hero? What actions do you need to do to be considered a hero? As young as I am, how am I a hero at this time of pandemic? A blessed day to all fellow Shannons. As we all know, heroes are known for their bravery, intelligence, and their outstanding achievements. They are also known from books, novels, and shows. For example, we have Jose Rizal and Andres Bonifacio who helped us seek freedom. What they did was a big contribution to our country. But what about me? What have we done in this time of crisis? In fact, in the littlest ways, I have become a hero. How? First, when I follow the health protocols whenever I go outside. Just by doing this, it helps prevent the spread of the virus. Also, following these protocols can save someone's life like our family, friends, and neighbors. For example, 
Number one, I wash my hands often. Number two, I always cover my mouth and nose with a tissue whenever I need to cough or sneeze. Number three, I help clean and disinfect my study area at home before and after I use it. Number four, I drink plenty of water. Number five, I always drink my vitamins. And number six, I go to bed early to rest and to keep myself healthy at all times. Lastly, I always pray. You might be wondering, how can you be a hero by just praying? Did you know prayer is a powerful thing for we communicate and speak to our Lord? And at this time of crisis, prayer is what we need most. As young as we are, our biggest contribution is to pray. Praying for our health, the health of others, and for all of this to end. I pray to make me and my family stronger and to make our world better. Why hesitate? Start praying and see the beautiful blessings the Lord will provide. So you see, as young as I am, I have become a hero. For I may not be known by people, but for me, I am a hero. As Hercules has said, a true hero isn't measured by the size of his strength, but by the size of his heart. How about you? How did you become a hero at this time? Thank you. What does it take to be a hero? Congratulations to Miss Anne Nugid, a participant, our last participant from the grade 7 level. Sir Papu, who would have thought that we are down to our first part of the program? And I think also that a second clue was shown a few seconds ago. Do you have any reminders, Miss Christelle, for our students before we go on lunch break? Okay, um, students, Shenans who are watching with us, via FB Live, please remember that we have to be back here at exactly 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And before we go, let us now put ourselves in the ever-loving presence of our Lord as we pray the Angelus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary. And she conceived of the Holy Spirit. And she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Be done unto me according to your glory. And the word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed and are blessed is the fruit women, of your womb, Jesus. Womb. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. And the Word was made flesh. And Let us pray. 
pour forth, we beseech Hail Mary, you, o full Lord, of grace, grace our the Lord is with you. That we to blessed are you among women, Christ, and son, blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. May Holy by Mary, his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his sinners, resurrection. Now, now and at the hour of our, our death. Amen. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ.
Blessed be God forever. Our speaker today is a graduate of Shana College of Taitai and a high school volunteer. Afternoon and blessed be God forever. Our speaker today is a graduate of Shana College of Taitai and a high school volunteer. <laughs>
Hi. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi. Yes. Now Ayan, I can. Ayan. Um, sorry po. Opo. Sorry po. Apo. 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 Ayan. My name is Daddy Rico Alida. Ano po. Uh, Broad assistant po for this team. You can. Nice. Ano na po. You can check na po your presentation. So we can see if there are any technical difficulties. Alright. Ang okay naman po. Ano. Uh, punta tayo dun sa slide na merong video. Well, it's not going to play any music. Uh, not really that. Mm. Here. So it's playing naman. You can see it moving. Do you have sounds po ba dyan? Wala naman po. No. no uh, I removed all the sounds. I made sure na wala siyang sounds. Uh, okay lang naman po if there is. No, it's alright. Kasi uh, pag may sounds siya, mababother ako while I'm talking. <laughs> no problem. So, bali, naka-speaker view naman po tayo if eh, uh, you will be presenting na po. Mm -hmm. So, yun. Lalabas po yung pinaka ano, yung presentation together with your ano. Ang catch lang po nito, uh, Miss Flores, is that from Zoom, I will be capturing this po directly to StreamYard. So, if you look at your Facebook uh, page po, you can stream. There is a 30 seconds delay. Ayan. Apo. Kaya lang may 30 seconds delay tayo, Miss. So, para hindi ka ma-bother, uh, you can focus lang po dun sa Zoom. Mm -hmm. Tapos yung audio po ng Facebook natin naka-off so that you don't have any feedback po. Because the, ano po, the host po natin uh, will be introducing po uh, Miss Estrada to be the one to uh, give you the introduction po. Okay. All right. Tapos, right after po nun, ito na po yung ika-capture natin. You may start okay. with the other na po. Mm -hmm. Just let me know, like, give me some kind of prompt kung ready na for me to share my screen. Yes po. Yes po. I'll be messaging naman po dito sa Zoom natin. Okay. Or ano po, if you're ready na po. I have here your teachers. Oh, yeah. Sila, ano. Mga Tony. Miss Tony, hi. Ito po. Yung may surprise Hi! visitor. Hello po! Hi, Sir RC! Hello, hello, hello! Good to see you. Good to come Kayo na po palang principal. Congratulations po. Sige, <laughs> pakinig nyo ko sa mamaya, ha? Apo. Sige, pwede nyo na-usap ka rin. 30 minutes ka lang daw. Uh, sabi po ni Miss Connie, one hour yung allotment, but try to limit the presentation to 30 minutes. So, pre-nactice ko po siya na huwag ako mag-over 30 minutes. I tried. I tried my best. <laughs> Ayan. Hi, Miss Flores. Hello. Ayan. Sige po, ma'am. So, we can just wait na lang po for the ano natin. Okay. Off ko muna sandali yung video ko, ha? Or, ma'am, no problem po. Okay. Sabay po.
Hello everyone, good afternoon. I'm Inosaf Iverson Chuaong here with you today. First of all, we experience
day everyone how do we know when to use a Michael Jason Arada, one of the English Shannon's and blessed be God forever. In today's lesson, we will discuss a lot of alternative words to use other than very. Although we highly admit that very is an extremely essential word in English, we use it quite often that suddenly it becomes obsolete and worn out. So today, I will teach you a lot of words to use other than very, but believe me, after this lesson, your descriptions will still be vivid, actually more vivid, and you will seem more eloquent than ever. Okay, so instead of saying very complete, say comprehensive. Instead of saying very dirty, say filthy. Instead of saying very hungry, say starving. Instead of saying very beautiful, say gorgeous. Instead of saying very busy, say swamped. Tune up to our next video to learn more trivial but short videos about English. Bye! Palindrome. A palindrome is a word, phrase, or sequence that reads the same, backward as forward. Examples of palindromes are mom, dad, radar, civic, level, race car, noon, refer, never odd or even. Was it a rat I saw? Step on no pets. Rise to vote, sir. Wow, palindromes. After we have finished our lunch, let us uh, have the prayer after meal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We give thee thanks, Almighty God, for this thy gifts, which we have received from thy bounty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, reminder, students, the literacy clues that we have been posting throughout the first part of our program shall not be 
commented in the comment section of our FB live stream, you have to just keep them all because later on you will be using them in the Google Forms that we will be sending to you later. Okay. It's nice to have you back, Miss Christelle. And we also would like to acknowledge the presence of our game master, Gab, via satellite. Hello, Gab, and hi, Sir Papu. How's your lunch? Good. I'm full. And I'd like to commend your new outfit, Miss Christelle. You look stunning in your maroon <laughs> dress. Thank you, sir, for the compliment. Gab, are you with us? Yes, sir. I'm still here. And yeah, this is now... Okay, sir, while waiting for the next contestants to get ready, why don't we grab this opportunity to talk about the theme of our Literacy Month this year? Great suggestion, Ms. Christelle. During these times of the pandemic, we highly see the essence of the digital world. You are correct, sir. But sadly, compressing the gap between individuals with regards to the opportunities to to access information as well as to communicate using the internet is growing based on surveys. I agree with you, Miss. Even educators like us sometimes encounter technical difficulties caused by internet problem. Let us ask our game master and also a student from the senior high school on his stand on this issue. Gab, what can you say about it? Actually, uh when we talk about digital divide, it's really yeah, yes, we are talking about technical difficulties, technical and we are, we are experiencing right, right now yeah, the yeah. gap between um, accessing information in the digital uh, world. So I guess mm. gap is currently unavailable as of this moment. So we shall now proceed to the announcement of the attendance code during the talk. Okay, class, please listen. Before we proceed to the next part of the program, students, please take note of the attendance code that will be flashed during the talk of our guest speaker. There will be three attendance code to be flashed while the, uh, the guest speaker that we um, have, that we will be having later on, is talking. And to start the afternoon part of our program, may I call on Ms. Roslyn Estrada to introduce our distinctive guest speaker. Good afternoon and blessed be God forever. Our speaker today is a graduate of Shana College of Taitai and the high school valedictorian of batch 2004. She finished Bachelor of Science, major in management information systems, magna cum laude at the Ateneo de Manila University. Currently, the vice president for operational management in HSBC Singapore. And just recently, she was certified as Enneagram practitioner. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome Ms. Cristina Flores to share with us her journey to the top. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I am Christina Flores, and you may also call me Kay. Uh, I am from Shena College High School Batch 2004. And today I will be sharing with you my stories about my journey to the top. So when Miss Connie invited me to speak to you today, I was so excited. It was really an easy yes. I immediately said yes to it. But when she told me that the topic was journey to the top, I had to take a pause. Because frankly, it's easy enough for me to share stories about myself, how I arrived at where I am today. 
but when I look at my experiences, I am not sure whether they equate to being at the top. I had to look back on my life and reflect, what does it actually mean for me to be at the top? So let's go back a little bit. When I was a child, it was quite easy. Being at the top meant winning the game. It does not matter what kind of game it is. It could be chess, it could be a race. The point is, it was only worthwhile for me to play a game if I can win it or if the team that I was in can win the game. I was a rather competitive child, not the aggressive kind. I did not pick up fights, but I did like being that person who is first to the finish line. I like being that person that nobody else can find in a game of tagutaguan. I like being that player who successfully passes through all the gatekeepers in a game of patentero. I also played a lot of video games, and especially if it's a one-on-one -on -one match, I like being that player who knocks out an opponent, levels up, and then goes to the next round. So it was quite simple, right? Being at the top meant being the winner. But of course, when I started studying, that idea of what it means to be at the top started to evolve. At school, you can win a lot of contests, a lot of competitions, and when you do, they call it an achievement. So it felt like to me that being at the top meant being an achiever. And that idea came to me at a pretty early age. I was three years old when I found a curious looking thing in my mother's box of keepsakes. So it was this small, round, metallic thing with a ribbon on it. It was rusty. It was quite brown already. It was not like any tools that you would use at home. And I did not know what it was for. My mother had to explain to me, okay, this is a medal. A medal is what they give you when you win a contest, and it represents your achievement. So apparently, when my mother was a student herself, she participated in a nationwide history quiz B. It was actually designed for college-level students, but at that time, she was still high, in high school. And her school still chose her to represent them anyway. And it did not actually matter that she was younger than everybody else in the competition because she still ended up winning it anyway. She scored the highest among all the participants in the Philippines in a right minus wrong scoring system. So a local news company interviewed her, wrote about her, and published her story in the newspaper. And my mother even has a clipping of that newspaper saved in an album. So ever since that day, I told myself, one day, I will have my own medal. My mother will be displaying truckloads of medals, gold and big ones, instead of just shining this tarnished, this rusty keepsake in vain. So to say that I am very comfortable on stage is quite an understatement. I was not just comfortable on stage. I reveled in it. Whether it's a pageant, it's a cultural presentation, hosting a program, an event, being the mask commentator or reading the responsorial psalm, I did it all. My face was all over the stage. I was a regular fixture in the Shena school stage. By the time that I graduated high school, I had been the president of my class every single year. I had been part of the student council also every single year. I had 13 different school orgs. Um, I was an actress, I was a dancer, mask commentator, name it. I would have done it all except for singing. I was also a mentor for various subjects. Uh, and my favorite was classical literature because I knew Greek mythology and Dante's Inferno by heart. I was also awarded the best CAT battalion commander, best 
in whatever subject because if you had a quiz before it, I would have probably joined it. I would have aimed for first place. And if not, I would still be in the top three. I was the Rotary Club Voice of Our Youth Impromptu Speaking Champion, and I joined many other extemporaneous speaking contests. I had three academic scholarships, and I, I had many other awards, and as you already heard, I was the Batch Valedictorian. So at the end of the 11 years that I spent in Shenna College, I already had approximately 75 medals, trophies, and various other awards in total. I lived up to my promise. I gave my mother truckloads of medals, gold and big ones, which she now happily displays in our home. So when I moved on to college, I told myself, hmm, I will take it easy. I'm going to be chill and laid back. Because anyway, nobody is asking me to be at the top. Why am I putting that pressure on myself? So I said, I am going to just chill. All right. So how long do you think that lasted for me? Two weeks. It only took me two weeks to feel so uncomfortable with the notion of taking it easy and just being laid back. There was something deeply ingrained in me that just naturally drove me to be an overachiever. And so I was known as the Quattro Kid. In Ateneo, the college that I went to, the highest score that you can get, the highest grade, is a four because they have a reverse grading system. So the four is the equivalent of an A. So to say that I am a Quattro Kid, is equivalent to saying that I am a straight A student. All my subjects had perfect grades. You also already know what my course is. I graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in Management Information Systems, and I was the batch top-notcher. Now, the interesting thing is that I did not need to actually graduate from my course in order to get my first job. In the middle of the semester, while I was doing a project presentation, my professor, this guy in the middle, invited professionals from many different industries, from many different big companies. So we had people from PLDT, Procter & Gamble, Globe Telecom, and this lady over here hired me on the spot solely on the basis of how I presented and defended my project. So after chit-chatting with my professor and getting to know me a little bit, she realized that I am a first honor dean's lister and that I was running for Latin honors. She also knew that I did not need to take any final exams anymore in order to graduate. I was already exempted from all the final exams. So she asked me, would it be possible for you to start working before your graduation? So the funny thing was, I had to take a vacation leave from work just so I can attend my own college graduation, where I was eventually given the Latin distinction of magna cum laude. So the role that this lady gave me is a business intelligence and project management role at Globe Telecom. For most of you nowadays, you might better recognize business intelligence as data science. All right. And as I've said, I was still a student when I started working. That's why I look like an intern. But this photo was also taken on a Friday. That's why we're allowed to wear casual clothes and we look as if we are just a college barcada. The point is that natural compunction to be an overachiever persisted even as I started working. So on the first week of my job, I was already making waves. And what do I mean by that? I was changing the way that they were doing business intelligence analysis and reporting. I was producing analytical insights and recommendations, which they have never seen before. 
And my stakeholders, the people who benefited from the work that I did, started flaunting my output to everybody else. So they were saying, hey, look, we have a better intelligence report because we got it from K. So now all the other departments at Globe Telecom were requesting the same. And my teammates, the people in my department, were all saying, you are setting the benchmark very high. And that was actually a good thing because during that time, people did not know what business intelligence was. People did not realize the value of business intelligence and how you can use data science in order to drive success and competitive advantage in a business. So me producing the kind of output that a lot of people appreciated was actually in a way also effectively promoting business intelligence as an industry. You could say that I helped pioneer business intelligence in Globe Telecom. It did not take very long before another senior executive took notice of me. It just so happened that that person belongs to a different organization. So in less than three months of me being at my first job, I was pirated by HSBC. And you might wonder, pirated? Does it have anything to do with illegal movies, download, downloads, or anything of that sort? No. In a corporate setting, when you are being pirated, you are being poached. It means you have a job, you love your job, and you have no intention of leaving your job. But there is this other organization who wants you to transfer, to move over to their side. And the way to do that, for them to be able to convince you to transfer, they will offer you twice or thrice the salary that you are currently getting or whatever other benefits that you don't cur currently have in your position. So it was very flattering. And I said, thank you, HSBC. But I love Globe very much, so I would have to respectfully decline. When the bosses at Globe heard that I was being poached by HSBC, they counter-offered me. Now, counter-offering is what organizations do when they try to convince their own employees to stay with the organization. They told me, okay, we can customize your, your career path, your career development. We will mentor you. We will put you in teams that you like. We will do whatever you want. And it was very flattering because remember, I was fresh out of college. This was less than three months of me working. So I did not really have that much experience yet. But this company that I was working for was already giving me so much value and significance. And they were telling me, you are a rare gem. You are a jewel. And when we find a rare gem, a diamond in the rough, of course, we would do our best to keep you and to make sure that you stay. And that, re uh, that felt really good. That felt very good. But HSBC was also very persistent. They kept coming back. And by the third time that they offered me something, I could no longer decline because they gave me something that I truly wanted, which is a focused career path towards business intelligence. That's how I found myself becoming an assistant manager at 20 years old. So it was not a conscious thought for me when I started working. I did not tell myself, I want to be the boss of this company. But I did have that desire to be a prodigy. And what do I mean when I say I wanted to be a prodigy? I did not have to be the highest boss, the biggest boss, but I wanted to be a high-ranking executive at a very young age. So in Globe Telecom, I worked with a team, but I had to produce my own results. That's called being an individual contributor. But in HSBC, I had to be a people manager. Aside from my own work, I had to oversee the work of many other people. All of them had been older than me. I had a staff who was 14 years older than me. Just imagine, she was already hired by the organization at the time when I was still in grade one. 
I also had a staff who was a grandfather. Imagine how strange it felt like to sit across someone who had so much more life experience than I had. And I was telling this person, you are doing well in your job. This is the part that you are doing well. This is the part that you still need to improve on. I'm going to help you fulfill your career aspirations. Just imagine yourself right now at your age, talking to your lolo or talking to your uncle or talking to your parents and telling them, pointing out to them, what are they doing well and what are they not doing well and telling them how they can improve themselves. It's a very strange conversation. But I had to strike a delicate balance because I was the boss. I might be younger than all of them, but I was the boss. And I needed to project an image of maturity. And I had to maintain a level of matured thinking. Even though, as you can see from my photos, I am still very much a child. So I became a manager at 22 years old. And then I became an assistant vice president at 25 years old. And I also quickly developed a reputation at work. When there is a process that is problematic and you don't know how to fix it, you go to Kay, ask her to look into it, and she will find either a creative solution or the most efficient way to fix the problem. If you need to talk to a lot of people in the organization from different parts of the world, particularly if they are from the region or from the group in London and UK, you get K to facilitate that discussion. If you need to pitch a business case, if you need to sell an idea, if you need to convince a large group of people to implement a major change, you get K to present that case. I was not working in a construction company, but I got away with doing weird things like wearing a hard hat and walking around the office looking like that because they knew that I will deliver on my promise. Regardless of my childish antics, I was giving them quality and output that they could not get from anybody else. Essentially, I became the go-to person, the top of mind choice, of the big bosses whenever they needed something urgent, something confidential, something that probably had high stakes or something that had to be presented to very important people. And soon enough, I did not just find myself being approached because they needed me to do something. I became their apprentice. These are all the big bosses that I worked with. And for some of them, they called me baby girl. It's because I was usually the youngest person in the executive meeting room, brushing elbows with the big bosses who are mothers, fathers, grandparents. And they all look at me and they saw me as that overachieving daughter. I was like their overachieving daughter who they are honing to one day take over the business and carry on their legacy in the organization. I was brushing elbows with the CEO, that's the chief executive officer, that is the highest ranking officer in the country. I was sent to regional conferences where I met even bigger bosses from many different parts of the world until I was eventually offered an international role to be the vice president for operational management in HSBC Singapore. I was the only foreigner, the only Filipino in that team. And as you can see from my photo, I still look like a kid who was just lost in Wonderland. They gave me a very nice service apartment, and I eventually found a condominium for myself, which became my very happy home. So once again, I found myself working with big bosses in Singapore. I was not just following orders or doing what they asked me to do. I was actually part of the senior management team that developed and drove the strategy for the organization. Once again, I was that baby girl in the company of all the big bosses. So if I stick to my definition of what it means to be at the top, winning the game, being an achiever, becoming a prodigy, 
I would think, right, that mm, I may have done well for myself. But the thing is, at that height, you suddenly develop a different kind of perspective. Similar to when you climb a mountain, when you go to a very high place, the things that used to be big and towering for you suddenly seem small. The things that used to matter to you, like medals, recognition, achievements, you suddenly feel like they're rather insignificant and you start to see what really matters. Now, don't get me wrong. I am happy with a lot that I have in my life. I am very thankful for the opportunities and the experiences that I have had. But when you talk to many other people, you would find a good number of them who would say that it's actually lonely at the top. It makes you wonder, right? Why are there so many movies and stories about big bosses who apparently have lonely personal lives? Why are there so many movies about a successful person getting into an accident, having a life-changing experience, and suddenly they would start living at the edge of the world? Why are there so many stories about people in positions of power who suddenly give it up? and start living like a hermit or a recluse. It's because to be where they are, to be at the top, they've had to sacrifice, to give up a lot of things. They gave up their personal time. They gave up bonding with their family. They gave up their passions, their interests, even the very notion of rest, relaxation, and vacation. And when they get to the end of their journey, they start asking themselves, was it really worth it? And the answer is always that success, power, prestige, money, sure, they can make you happy for a time. But ultimately, they will never give you the kind of fulfillment and meaning that we all want to have in our lives. Which is why I think it is important that we reframe the idea of what it means to be at the top. Because it's very easy for us to fall into that notion that being at the top is just about having power, having a lot of achievement, being successful. But I don't think that's the case. First of all, it is never about winning over others. When you are climbing a mountain, you don't reach the peak by racing against other people. In fact, if you race against others, it becomes dangerous. It becomes lethal. And you don't reach the top by climbing over others or pushing them down. So for me, being at the top should just mean being the highest or best version of yourself. You are your only competition. If you do have a competitive nature, as I did when I was a child, it should never be directed towards competing with others. Spend your energy just outdoing yourself. You should be your only benchmark. Your competitive nature should only compel you to be better than what you did before, never minding what anybody else is doing. Also, being at the top is not about amassing awards and achievements. If you look back at all the things I did in school, all the extracurricular activities, they would mean nothing if the only reason I did them was to get a piece of medal. What was more important was that I relished the learning experience. They made me a better person. They enriched me. They made me sociable. They made me collaborate. And I am putting all those lessons into good use. Right now in my company here in HSBC Singapore, I introduced the concept of a year-long staff engagement program wherein we put people into different groups. We call them communities. And we engage in amazing race kind of activities. So similar to your experience at school with your extracurricular activities, we play sports. We also have yoga sessions. 
We have CSR activities and friendly competitions like charades. We have photo taking contests. We have cheerleading. We even sing karaoke. And we also participate in dance competitions. That's me in the middle dancing Michael Jackson's Beat It. So for outsiders, you might think, oh, that's so fun. And it's good that they have the time to play all those games. Where do they find the time? The point is, we are not just having fun. We are also changing the culture of our organization. The goal is to transform the organization. Because we don't want to be a company wherein people just come in to work day in and day out, and then they feel nothing. I want us to be a company that enriches the personal lives of our people. I want us to be a company that takes care of our people's well-being. I want us to be a company that supports our people's personal passions. And I want us to be a company where people feel that they belong to a larger community. And the beautiful thing that you get when you invite people to participate in the so-called extracurricular activities is that you lower the boundaries between the high-ranking officers and the lowest-ranking staff. It does not matter who you are in the organization. When you meet each other in the playing field or in a dancing stage, you become equals. You become open to talk to each other, to listen to each other's feedback. You are open to collaborate. And isn't that what we need in any working environment that we find ourselves in? Lastly, being at the top is not about having a position of power. Instead, it's using whatever position you already currently have to make a positive influence in the world. I told you that I could get away with doing weird things in the office, like walking around with a hard hat on my head. And the reason for that is because people trusted that I will deliver on my promise of quality, output, excellence. And I will always give them more than what they needed and what they asked me for. And I use that to my advantage. It's because of that that I am able to convince them to do unconventional things. I am able to make them say yes to things that are not normally within the normal scope of our jobs. In HSBC Philippines, back when I was still in Manila, we were able to invite students in our organization. I am very passionate about teaching. So we invited uh, children into our organization so that they can learn what it's like to work in a banking industry, so that they can see what it's like to be in a multinational financial organization. And just recently, here in HSBC Singapore, I was also able to convince the company to pay for my certification course to become an Enneagram practitioner. And you might say, what is an Enneagram practitioner? What is an Enneagram trainer? To put it simply, Enneagram is a profiling tool which you can use for self-development, could be on a professional or a personal capacity. And you might wonder, why? Are you from the human resources department? Are you supposed to be a teacher? Are you supposed to be a psychologist? Are you going to be a life coach? No. Those things are not part of my job. Not at all. But my company was willing to pay for that certification and having me become an Enneagram trainer because they know that I will find ways to make use of it to better our organization. So if I ever meet the younger version of myself again, the little girl who believed that being at the top is about winning the game, being an achiever, or in my case, an overachiever, becoming a prodigy or being high up in the career ladder at a very young age. This is what I would tell her. Aspiring for greatness, dreaming big, and aiming high. They are not wrong in themselves. It's okay to have those ambitions. 
But those ambitions must not just be directed inward. And this is also my message to all of you. Whatever good you gain from your success, make sure that it cascades to others. Whatever it means for you to be at the top, when you find yourselves there, use it to pull others up. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Ms. Christina Flores. We have learned big time and we are now more inspired because of your talk. And now, to present the Certificate of certif Appreciation, let me read the citation. Shena College, Taitai Rizal, Certificate of Appreciation. This is hereby awarded to Ms. Christina M. Flores for her inspiring talk about the journey to the top during the English Literacy Month with the theme Literacy for a Human-Centered Recovery, Narrowing the Digital Divide, given this 1st of October, 2021, at Shena College, Taitai Rizal. Signed, Ms. Maria Concepcion J. Cruz, English Area Coordinator, and signed, Mr. Giancarlo V. Arcewals, Principal. Again, congratulations and thank you, Kay. Congratulations, Ms. Christina, and thank you, Sir Papu, for reading the citation in the Certificate of Appreciation that we will be present, that will be given to uh, Ms. Christina Flores. So for the meantime, let's proceed to, may we call on Gab for the Mr. Word. Hello, hello to all of you. How are you? You know what? I've learned a lot from what Miss Flores has said on her talk. It's all about pulling others up when you are at the top. You know, it's all about empowerment and giving whatever you could give to other people. Whatever it is that you had, you could also offer it to others. Now, let's all shake it all off. From us and let's play another game and I'm back once again guys I am it's a boy Gab 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 Gabby and I'm here to be your game master for another game another mystery word that we have prepared for all of you now again I will repeat the mechanics for our mystery game in this game you have one minute to uh, to give your answers on our chat box using the format that, you, that we used earlier. And I will be presenting the mystery words on my bag, just like I did earlier. And you will be giving the answers. All right, for this one, all of you could give you the answers. All right. Now, without further ado, here is our mystery word. In five, four, three, two, one and here we go you have one minute to answer this this is actually a word that is really tricky and it is rarely i rarely uh you know encounter this word so maybe if many of you knows this then congratulations <laughs> all right you have last 30 seconds left just keep on typing guessing whatever it is whatever this word is okay this rarely used word is a useful term for pretending to be in disinterested in something when you actually want it for short in tagalog pa bebe no <laughs> All right, you have five seconds left in four, three, two, one, and ten, 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 ten. All right, that is where our time.
time ends. The correct answer for this one is... There you have it. Axismus. Actually, I, I, really done my re I really did my research for this one because I really don't know how to pronounce this. And it is actually axismus. And to use it in example, to use it in sentence, I know you want the donut. You're just displaying axismus by pretending you don't. That is the meaning and the usage of axismus. All right. Thank you for that, ladies and gentle Shannons. Once again, back to the studio, sir. Pop. Sir Papu and Ms. Orozo, how are you both? I'm so sorry for the technical difficulty that we had earlier. Thank you, Gab. That was wonderful, as, as always. So, um, we had just finished with our guest speaker, Christina Flores, who was the valedictorian of her batch. And inabot niyo po ba, did you, were you given the chance to teach Christel? Um, unfortunately, I wasn't given the chance to meet her, but she, her story is quite inspiring, really. I have worked several times with Kay during our stint in Shena. Uh, she's one year lower than me. And look at her now. If Kay Flores can reach her dreams and reach the top, you, Shenans, can do it as well. Okay, thank you, Sir Papu. And now I feel kind of sad knowing that we are getting close to the end of the program. I feel the same, Miss Christelle, but don't be. Let us just make the most of this competition. You're absolutely right, Sir Papu. So before we begin, why don't we give them some history of how and when this next competition, uh, this next competition has started? Go, Miss Christelle, enlighten us. So back in 1861 to 1865, during the Civil War in America, can you imagine, sir, that was five years the then President of the United States of America, Abraham Lincoln, delivered a speech on the site of one of the bloodiest and most decisive battles of the war at the National Cemetery of the Gettysburg in Pennsylvania. I think I have read about that. Though he was not the featured orator that day, Lincoln's brief address becomes so well remembered and is now the inspiration of the next competition we will be having, the Gettysburg Parody Competition. You are indeed correct, sir. And with that being said, let us acknowledge first the judges during the elimination round of this competition. The judges who judged the prelimination of the grade 11 participants were Mr. Harvin Santa Ana, Mr. Michael Jason Arada, and Ms. Eliza Rochelle de la Torre. Those who judged the prelimination of the grade 12 participants of the Gettysburg Parody Competition are the following faculty members. Mr. Jude Patrick Abading, Ms. Christine Balgira, Ms. Agana, Sir Papu, Ms. Santos, Dr. De Leon, and Dr. Ramos. And now, to deliberate the performances of our final contestants in this competition, let me do the honors of presenting to you our distinguished judges. For grade 11, Ms. Christine Balgira, Ms. Mercedes Santos, Dr. De Leon, and Dr. De Leon. For grade 12, Mr. Harvin Santa Ana, Mr. Michael Jason Arada, and Ms. Eliza Rochelle De La Torre. Thank you, Ms. Christelle. Let's move on to our Gettysburg Parody Competition. And now, our contestant number one from St. Rose of Lima, ABM. The advisor is Mr. Rob Tirados. Please welcome Faye Dominic.
today we are at war with the foe we cannot see or touch. COVID-19 is a virus that has tremendously affected our lives. Each day, thousands of lives lost, thousands of soldiers fight in the forefront with their lives on the line. Our frontliners battle this virus with blood, sweat, and tears to keep us safe and to give us another chance of life. Today, we face a new normal of lockdowns and restriction and call it safety. We fight for our sanity, our livelihood, and our precious breath to keep this virus from winning. Despite the gravity of this misfortune brought upon us, we Filipinos will not lose against the enemy. We are naturally brave, resilient, and we find ways to survive. It is at this time that we need our utmost solidarity and support for one another to overcome this war. We faced so much obstacles, but none of it succeeded in bringing us down. This virus should not hinder our strength and be the reason for our nation to fall. This COVID-19 virus should not be the end of our nation. It is just another challenge that we will surpass that can make us stronger. We are brave, we are strong, we are one. Let us fight this virus together and be the hero of our nation. Let us be the strength of one another. We shall not forget the lives of our brothers and sisters who have fallen fighting against this war. With our determination to win this battle and God's mercy, we will be saved from this struggle. In God we trust because He will never abandon us. What an incredible parody. Let us put our hands together for Faye. It is now time for us to welcome our second contestant from St. Margaret of Hungary, Yum's advisor, Miss Cynthia Comprendio, presenting Roshanda Bidua. <laughs> President of the United States. A score and two years ago, our neighboring country brought forth on this world a suffering nation, conceived in disease and dedicated to the proposition that all Chinese men that ate bats created this virus and spread it equally to the world. Now we are engaged in a great medical war, mass testing, whether that person or any person so infected and so positive on COVID can long endure. We are met at a great medical hospital for the virus. We have come to dedicate a big portion of that field as a recovering place for those who here sacrificed their lives for this nation to live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot cough, we cannot touch, we cannot go outside this pandemic to see the outside ground. The brave frontliners, doctors and nurses who struggled here have consecrated it far above our weak body to heal or harm. China will little note nor long remember what we say here, 
but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the fighters, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished battle, which they who fought their lives here have thus far so medically advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great health risk remaining before us, that from this honored frontliners, we take increased devotion for that cause for which they gave their best full measure of healing and recovery. Though we are highly grateful for this frontliners, heroes and fighters shall not be in vain but in modest and success. That this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of healing and safety, and that the COVID-19 virus in the country, of the infected, for the affected, shall perish from the earth. Thank you, Roshanda. Let's give her a round of applause for her sparkling performance. Ms. Christelle, before our next contestant, what do we have? So, um, before we proceed with our next contestant, we will be having a rebus game. And may we call on Gab from our satellite? Hello once again to all of you, Shannons, and to both of you, sir and miss. Now, let us proceed first to the announcement of the winners for the previous Mystery Word and the Rebus game that we've had earlier. Our winner for the Growing Old Rebus earlier is Mary Jules Apresurado from 11 St. Martin de Porres. All right? And then for the Axismus, our winner is Isaiah Ross Tapawan from 11 St. Thomas Aquinas. And now, ladies and gentle Shannons, let me do first a short, very, very short shout out to all of you so that we would know that you're still with us. All right? Hi to San Victores, Vea Aramanda, from, uh, to Bray Mejorada, to Able, Christian James Able, from Charles, Jacob Daniel, John Vincent Hugo, and everyone that are still here with us. Just keep on watching and stand by for more games and more activities that we and the teachers have prepared for this eSpeech Festival, this 2021 Literacy Month culminating activity. And now, this is our next Rebus game. Are you now ready? I hope that you are because I wouldn't be waiting. Oh. <laughs> All right. This is Rebus game. You have one minute to answer this. You have one minute, guys. This one is quite easy, you know. I know many of us have already encountered this on different English uh, projects or maybe presentations by our teachers. So I know that you can answer this as you know, what, what they call like, um, I don't know how they say it in English, but in Filipino, we call it sisio lang, right? Yeah. A piece of cake. Yeah, that's what we call it in English. And you only have... 20 seconds left so type down your answers there as fast as you could because your time is running out and we want you to we want to give you a prize for this one and i know that your gcash accounts are already there with you and just ready to send all right and time's up our answer for this one is I hope that many of you have answered it correctly. And the answer is... Breakfast. All right. That's, actually, I told you that it was really easy. But yeah, it depends on on case-to-case -case basis and whatever. All right. And that's it for our Rebus game this time. I will be back later to announce the winner. And thank you all. Stay tuned for more. Sir Papu and Miss Orozo. 
Thank you, Gab, for that wonderful um, presentation of our word rebus. The word is breakfast, but if you can think about it, you can also use fast break. It will still be applicable for our it rebus word. It will still word. be the same. And we continue with our contest. Let us call on our third contestant from St. Catherine of Shena STEM. The advisor is Miss Daisy Anis. Please welcome our very own Gabrielle De Vela. Hello everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Inosaf Iverson Chuang here with you today. First of all, we ex two million cases and one year ago. A communist-led country brought forth upon the whole world and in our nation a disease that wreaked havoc, a pandemic that has claimed lives and made people realize that after death, all men will always be equal. Now, we are engaged in a great COVID war, testing whether our nation or our government, so vulnerable, can ever endure such grim occurrences. We have seen our nation crumble, our people divided. Truly, we are now in delicate world. A new world where fear dominates everyone. I say, God lead us and guide us. And we offer this to the people who died in this worldwide medical battlefield. This life that we now live is all virtual, powered and made possible by the excellence of technology. Day by day, we struggle to cope up with the challenges that appear out of the blue. The social divide that has been lingering in our society, even pre-pandemic, has evolved into something more complicated the digital divide. The technology developed by our geniuses is getting better and stronger as months pass by. A cause for a hurrah, no doubt, but not for many of our people here. The poor cannot bear the weight of technology, neither was it a necessity before, but it slowly is becoming one. We may have endured a difficult almost two years in this pandemic, but I can confidently say that this situation has opened our eyes to the real world, to the truth that lies beneath the veil of ignorance kept from us by those whose money buys all. Corruption, a word for many, a lifestyle for politicians, a downfall for our society and beloved country. In all of these acts of injustice and international humiliation, we cannot let it happen again. We cannot be silenced anymore. We cannot let our nation die. We die for our homeland, not the other way around. Just like the brave men living and dead, who struggled here, fought for the good of the public, we too shall hallow our vow to the flag of the Republic of the Philippines. As we practice democracy, may we never forget humanity. In this act of patriotism, we take increased devotion to the cause for which our countrymen have died. May the death of our beloved frontliners and medical workers be not in vain. I say, an open-minded government, a clean governance led by good people, by our people, and for the people. Let our dreams live, our words be known to all, and our hopes not perish from the earth. You really never fail to impress us, Gab. Both my hands are up to you. And now, let's call on our contestant number four from St. Peter of Verona, advisor, Ms. Rose Mary Salerna Sablay. Let's put our hands together for Enos Ralph Iverson Ong. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Enos Ralph Iverson Ong here with you today. First of all, we experienced lots of deaths and cases because of a wandering virus called COVID-19 or coronavirus. A lot of people had died because of this deadly virus. Mostly elder people are the targets. I'm sorry for all the people here today that lost a loved one. Truly am. So, how can we survive this pandemic, this virus? We need to be alert at all times. We need to follow the rules. We need to be obedient and listen with our own ears. We need to be active in this pandemic and should do something about our current situation. We need to take action to get out of, to get out of harm's way. To be safe, we should keep ourselves healthy, fit, 
positive and always be confident. Never think of negative thoughts or outcomes because it, on, it won't do us no good. It will only bring us down. Don't forget to pray to God because He will guide us no matter where we go, no matter how hard the situation is, He will never leave us behind. We need to stand up for the future, for the people who sacrifice their lives every day for us, the frontliners. We need to help each other because no one's gonna help each other but us. I am so thankful for all the people, all the frontliners who are out there working and protecting lives, the heroes of our country today. We are determined and we are strong. And I know we can make it through this pandemic. I know we can make it and I know we can make a better future for ourselves, our family, and for the children of tomorrow. We need to keep on moving forward no matter what, no matter how the situation is. We strive for a bright and healthy future, a future where we all can smile and enjoy happily and keep on trying to do what's best for us, for our country, keep on dreaming like there's no tomorrow, and keep on living life at its foot. Thank you. Thank you, Enos, for your wonderful speech. And that concludes our Gettysburg parody. But before that, what's next, Miss Christelle? All right. I am back again at it. <laughs> now we will have another mystery word for you guys to, you know, solve and guess whatever it is you have one minute again to solve for this word and within that one minute whoever posts and type down his or her comment on the comment section on our live on facebook first will be the one who will win this round all right are you now ready i hope that you are but before that let me shout out first to our dear teachers Sir Balahadia, Miss Anis, Miss Pedroso, all of the teachers that loves us all and gives all of their best for us. We love you and we appreciate all of you. Now, this is the moment that you are waiting for, for more cha-ching, right? All right. Our next mystery word is... This is open for all ladies and gentle Shannon, so be ready. I'll be presenting it in five, four, three, two, and one. Here we go. That is our mystery word. You have to guess it within one minute so that you could win this. Just keep on typing down your answer, keep on guessing, make those mind work and everything so that, you know, you could win the crash, you could win the, the cash prize. You still have 20 seconds left, so type it down as fast as you could, you know, keyboard warriors, go ahead, have it your way because you already have 10 seconds left to give your answers. And I'll be counting down in five, four, three, two, one, and time's up. Our correct answer for this one is. There we go, in Sushin. For example, the rain began to fall, but she turned her face up to it with the insouciant joy of someone who doesn't mind forgetting an umbrella. That is how you use the word insouciant. It is actually an adjective. Look at that. And, ladies and gentle Shannon, that's our mystery word for this time. But before that, let me announce first the winner for our breakfast rebus earlier, and it would was and it is 
Jane Fiscal from Travel Services One. Congratulations to you, and I am very proud of you. And now that is it for our rebus game, sir. Papu and Miss Arozo, back to you again. They're on the studio. Thank you, Gab. So our recent Mister the Word for today for this hour is. Insushan. The pronunciation is insushan. Insushan. May yeah. I saw some answers that said kwasan. So <laughs> that's not the correct answer. Maybe our students are hungry. So just sit back there and relax and have your snack while watching. And we would like to greet the 1,000 plus strong watchers of this e-speech festival okay so just imagine sir papo if we will be able to use all the mystery words that gab have provided us all throughout the program we will be extremely eloquent our vocabulary will be extremely eloquent that's correct miss Christel. and now let us move on to the second part of the gettysburg parody competition wherein we will feature the performers of our grade 12 students contestant number one is from ABM1. The advisor is Miss Nisena Montano. May we call on Kyla Marie Reyes. Let us all welcome our speaker for today, Ms. Kyla Marie and Reyes. 2,401,960. That's the total number of COVID-19 cases here in our country. And I'm here to show the reality behind it. The coronavirus disease or COVID-19 crisis that immersed the world for the past months really challenges all of us. From all the things that we used to do way back then, we're not able to do this anymore because of this new norm. This crisis has significant impacts on countries with high levels of needs and with people who just get paid right, which is only accepted on a daily need basis. And one of those countries is our country, Philippines. As COVID-19 continues to spread both within countries and globally, many families struggle to balance their responsibilities with their children in providing their necessities. And even literacy is affected, especially those children who doesn't have the capability to study because of money. These experiences can address health, economic, and social challenges. But you know what? We can survive this. How? Why? Because we are Filipinos. We can bring the light wherever we go. We can recover from this challenge that we are facing right now. With our united efforts, we can move forward and I'm confident that we can get through this. We need to increase input and development and focus on the COVID response and vaccines. And for the COVID-19 fighters right now, I want to encourage all of you that no matter how difficult life is, there's still plenty of reasons to keep on fighting. They can still have the hope and keep an open mind because they will get through this. Let's let them feel that they're not alone in this fight because we are all here to help each other and give them the hope that they need in this right time. We can do this because we're not just Filipinos. We are Filipinos and we can do everything. We can fight this invisible enemy that we have because we also have our invisible shield and that's our Let's claim a COVID-free world, a COVID-free Philippines. Keep on moving forward, Kababayans. We can do this. Let's end this pandemic together. Thank you, Ms. Kalamari and Reyes. Through the use of literacy that we continue to improve despite this pandemic, we can think of a more effective way to end this crisis together. Literacy for human-centered recovery, narrowing the digital divide. Kyla obviously spent a lot of time internalizing her character. Let's give her a round of applause for her exquisite performance. But before we proceed with our next contestant, may we call on Gab again from our satellite studio for another game. 
Hello, hello. I am back at it again. It's your boy Gab. And I am ready again to give you another game. I hope that all of you are still here. That just keep on typing and guessing our questions that we let you solve on this live. All right. Our next game is Rebus. And our next Rebus word is well, you have to guess it, actually. But here we go. I'll I'll be now presenting our rebus. You have one minute to type down your answers. What do you think the answer for this one is? I hope that many of you could answer this one because you know it's. Yeah, I won't give. I won't say anything. And yet you still have. 40 seconds left to type down your answers. So hello, hello to our students there, to Lian Berha, to other to to St. Mary Magdalene. Hi, how are you? To other sections, just keep on watching. To the mayors, to all of you, to our SCIBED. Just keep on watching and enjoy our program. All right, last 10 seconds. And five, four, three, two, one. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, do you want that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Our answer for this one is ready for anything. Amazing, isn't it? All right. Let me announce now the winner for earlier, the insertion. Our winner for insertion is Princess Maniakop from STEM 1. Congratulations to you. Round of applause, ladies and gentle Shannons. And that's it for our rebus here this time. Once again, I am Gabby. Back to you, Sir Papu and Miss Orozo. Thank you, Gab. And we as Shenans are trained to be ready for anything. Indeed, we are. And now, may we call on our contestant number two from grade 12, Yums 2, advisor, Mr. John Patrick Antona, presenting Mika Juliana Sorel Sion. Two years and six months ago, our country and the rest of the world shut down. It was the start of the unexpected battle we will be all facing, the fight against the coronavirus, a strong invisible enemy that feared and shocked everyone to which led us adopting to the new normal. It is the survival of the fittest that opened the eyes of many that we are all equal in fighting this battle. All nations work hand in hand in inventing vaccines. Citizens abide by the new rules. Face masks and face shields are being worn everywhere. But until when? We are still in the midst of pandemic. Every day, many lives are lost. Cases keep rising and some were healed. Now, we are offering anything we can contribute to our nation and especially the frontliners who gave their lives wanting to win this battle so that we can all go back to normal. But what do we really have to do to help these frontliners when we ourselves are not prepared? The government that should help the people don't even know what to do. We are being experimented on this battle. It's almost three years living with this virus around us, fighting every day to live, but still there are people starving. The businesses are closing and many are dying. It became a fight on our own against the coronavirus. Soon, hopefully, when all this is over, we too shall heal. By that time, we have learned, but we will never forget what our leaders did, who were left behind and treated unfairly by this society during the battle. We who should be given all the help are being ignored for all selfish reasons. And we who are left will fight for those who are gone. And we will continue to fight this battle that should be done long ago. 
we deserve the rights and freedom as what our heroes have fought for. This country, this nation that God created shall have a new life, that this government and its people that remains shall live justly in this world. Hi, this is Mr. Michael Jason Arada, one of the English teachers of China College of Tai Tai, and we are here for another adventure in English 101. Some English trivia. Do you know that swims will still be swims even if you turn it upside down? And no words in English that rhyme with month orange, silver, and purple. I believe we had a technical difficulty with our videos, with video. so kindly clarify, Miss Christelle. Okay, so the previous video about the previous Gettysburg presentation that you have watched is from our contestant number three. Culinary, the advisor is Miss Janelyn Cabilogan. Let's uh she was Roba Gavan. Now it's for real. This is it. Uh presenting to you Mika Juliana Sarel Sion from grade 12 Humes 2. Advisor, Miss Mr. Rather, John Patrick Antona. Hi, I'm Mika Juliana Sarel Sion from grade 12 Humes 2, and this is my Gettysburg speech part. It's been a year and months since the COVID-19 pandemic has brought a change in this world. New set of rules has been implemented considering safety in its utmost precedence. Now we are currently engaged in a battle against the war where our enemies are unseen. The viruses are continuously spreading to different parts of the world and new heroes in this time show exemplary dedication in their fields, risking their lives for the nation to live. This is a real fight that everyone should survive. But in a larger picture, we will see that the virus is not only the enemy. It is devastating, yet as we open our eyes wider for the reality, we will be able to see that our country is still in a mountain of despair. No wonder that up until now, we are still in a vulnerable stage. Why? It is because even before this outbreak, we haven't been taught the right discipline. So in this current present situation, it leads to mishandling. Furthermore, our country is surrounded by these never-ending issues in our society, including the issues towards our government system, whereas they are the ones who are supposed to be responsible for handling this. But sometimes, they fail. Nevertheless, as one of the citizens in our country, we also have our responsibility and duty, and that is to take action instead of questioning others who have the most power. We are able to overcome this if we put in our minds that we shouldn't continue living in fear, but rather living in faith. That we have Almighty God who is greater than all of these. Thank you. That was Mika who have delivered her speech. And now, before we proceed to our last contestant, we shall have another mystery word. All right. I hope that you are not getting tired of seeing my handsome face. <laughs> All right. 
let me now announce first the winner for our Rebus Ready for Anything winner. The winner is Christine Jane Purification from STEM2. Congratulations to you, my hearts. Congratulations. I am very proud of what you did. Just keep doing that. Just co keep commenting on our comment section. Keep those comments rolling because we are still going to have many more things in this eSpeech Festival this day. Alright, now, our next mystery word. You still have what you, again, you have one minute to give your answers and type it down on the comment section. Alright, and this is our next mystery word. Get ready. Here it goes. <gasps> it's such a long word, you know. Uh, well, this word is a great word to use when writing history papers or talking about your favorite historical dramas. Actually, my favorite historical drama is um, The Crown, but it's actually not 100% uh, factual. I know, but you know that that is actually one of those TV series that I have watched that helped me, you know, speak in English. And actually, I sometimes I acquire their accent, the British one. <laughs> but it's really difficult for us. And you still have ten seconds left to give your answers on the comment section in our official official Facebook page. And last three, two, one, and time's up. Dun, 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 dun. And our correct answer is. I hope that you answered correctly. This is the answer for this long jumbled word. There you have it. Anachronistic, an adjective. For example, your drawing of Abraham Lincoln. Talking of an talking on an iPhone is charmingly charmingly anachronistic. All right, that is how we use the word anachronistic. Thank you for those who answered this mystery word. Once again, I'm gonna be going out. That's it for me. Once again, I am Gab, and back to the studio. Thank you, Gab, for another word, anachronistic, that you have given us right this very hour. And now, we will go to our last, but definitely not the list, a student from grade 12, STEM, STEM 5. The advisor is Miss Sarah Jane Calago. Please welcome Estefany Villaganes. About a year and a half ago, our country began waging war against an adversary that was invisible to the human eye alone. Our people have devoted their lives to ensuring that independence from this is within reach. Now, we are bombarded by a crisis led and unfolded by a disease called the coronavirus. The incompetence of the administration is testing whether the land of resiliency or any nation so auspicious and so courageous can long endure. Our motherland is continuously being challenged with inept response and unprepared leaders. Since then, the government system in our country has been flawed and is far from ideal. Our government's approach to the crisis has had a significant impact on many of us, and we have suffered as a result. In these tough circumstances, some of them even still dare to be corrupt, making us understand that we made an unwise decision and entrusting them to run our country. Despite this, there are still elected officials who are dedicated to their service and undoubtedly will go to any lengths to be empathetic and provide for our necessities. They are the true leaders and so therefore they are well deserving of their positions. We have come to release our hold on these unfortunate matters as a respect for those who have died here that this nation might survive. However, in a broader sense, we cannot allow an inept jurisdiction to rule on this ground. The followers, heroes, from doctors to teachers who have sacrificed their lives 
toiled, and fought here have sanctified it far above our power to add or detract. They have no concrete ideas how to seize the pandemic right now, which is why having competent leaders is vital, especially during a pandemic, because it is not just about health and politics, but also about how they will assist our country in becoming better despite the challenges we face and what they will be able to do for the sake of our country. Our government officials must govern us in a fair and equitable manner since we have given our trust in them. Rather than pursuing their own agenda, they should use their positions of authority and power to benefit our beloved country instead. For the next leaders, the needs and rights of the people must be a top priority. They must take into account all of the requirements of their country as a whole. Finally, the most important thing is that they are held accountable for their actions and for the repercussions of their actions. Good day everyone! In the English language, we usually commit errors in using the prepositions in, on, and at. For today, I'm going to focus my discussion on the use of the prepositions in time expression. What preposition is the most appropriate to use in the following sentences? First, I was born blank 1994. Second, All right, we have witnessed all our contestants for the Gettysburg Address. But before we proceed with our next competition, I think you have an announcement for us, Miss Christelle. So the Google form for the at the, the Google form will be pinned in the FB Live comment section of this live event. So please take note of that, students. This will be used for the. Attendance? Attendance code, yes. All right, so it will be pinned in our Facebook Live comments section. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Cristel. And here are now our distinguished grade 8 students in the field of declamation. We have our contestant number one from Stewards of God's Creation with the advisor, Ms. Rochelle Ami Serpahuan, English teacher, Mr. Russell Dave Moreno, Please welcome Eliza Labugin. I can't I can't breathe in this white uniform. It's so tight. Release me. Release me. Well, thank you for your kind words. I know, right? I already expected this. I'm not surprised. Oh, I haven't introduced myself to some of you. For those who do not know, which only a few don't, I am Janina Ontanko, a smart young lady. Or, hmm, I should I say, a genius? Do you need someone to answer your problems? I and the perfect person to approach. You asked why? Because I know everything. Give me those equations. I'll simplify it. Give me those problems. I'll solve it. Give me that piece. I'll correct it. It really feels good to be a genius. You know, Sometimes I wonder, maybe if I was born a long time ago, I could have created all the inventions in this world. Maybe yes, maybe yes, 
Why can't I? I know everything, remember? <laughs> my mother calls me Jean, my nickname. She has been uh, my inspiration. Oh, no, no, I meant assistant ever since. How can she be my mentor? I know a lot more than her. My father, I don't know him. I refuse to know him. Some people told me he was a criminal, a thief, a man of pure evil, a product which sent him to jail. Oh, but some people also told me he has changed. I don't believe them. I tend to react whenever they connect me with him. I can't stand it. I hate it when people stand on my way or does something without my approval. Only I knows what's right. Mom, where are the documents on my table? I asked. Oh, I thought they were trash. I threw them away, she answered. Oh, I told you, don't touch anything here, you stupid moron. Watch your mouth, young lady. I am still your mother. You cannot say that to me. And why can't I? I know a lot more than you. You know, maybe that's because you're a brainless idiot. Yes, that was true. And then she slapped me in the face. I punched her hard and laughed as she dropped to the floor. You should have seen her face as she fought for her life. Hilarious. She's dead. Ha, huh. what a relief. Huh. Oh no, here they are. No, get away from me. Let me go. No, release me. Release me, I should be free. Re no, stop. Release me. Thank you, Eliza, for that compelling presentation. Let's put our hands together for Eliza's wonderful presentation. And now we shall now proceed to our next mystery word. Gab? Hey there, Hello Gab. Again. All right. Actually, those kind of declamation pieces, uh, I really encourage you guys to join in those competitions you know it enhances you it enhances your speaking skills it uh, develops the way you develop your deliver your emotions and everything you know and now our winner for our previous mystery word is Hayden Esper from 11 St. Vincent all right congratulations to you a round of applause ladies and gentle Shannons now for our next mystery word boom <laughs> our next mystery word is this one is actually quite uh common and i hope that you will find this a lot easier than the previous ones and so because of that without further ado let us now begin you have one minute again guys to answer this mystery word in five four three two one and bloop There you have it, ladies and gentle Shannons. The word, the jumbled word. It is a writing system using picture symbols. 
I want you to answer this correctly because this one is a lot easier than the other ones that we've had earlier. And I hope that you will get the prize for this one. Actually, you know, back when I was in grade 7, I used to join declamations. I... Well, how do you say it? I used a piece that is the vengeance, it's not ours, it's God's. And I did it when I was still fat, even though one line from there is, alms, alms, give me, shit, spare me a piece of bread. I'm a child so young, so thin, and so ragged. There, yeah, It's so ironic. And now that's where our time ends. The correct answer for this one is... There you go. The correct answer is hieroglyphic. All right, it is a noun. For example, Egyptian hieroglyphs were the formal writing system used in ancient Egypt. Congratulations, whoever you are that got the correct answer for this one. I am very proud of you. Just skip it up. And that is where I go out now. Back to you, sir and miss. Papu, of all the words, I guess of all, I guess, Sir Papu, of all the words Gav has given us in the uh, Mr. Word game, the hieroglyphics is the only word that I'm from familiar with. At least I'm being honest with that. And I think we have some hieroglyphics in Angono or in Binangonan, so I think we are all familiar with that word. Indeed, we are. We should be. Okay, so. Now, let me call on contestant number two from family-oriented advisor, Miss Ruth May Calonce. Yours truly here is her English subject teacher. Let's all work welcome Rian Claudine Axelan. I told you I didn't even want to do this video. Look at me. I'm not prepared for this. <sighs> Excuse me, what is it? Me? A juvenile? Oh! Am I a juvenile delinquent? I'm a teenager. I'm young. Young at heart and in mind. In this position, I'm here. I enjoy doing nothing but the drink the wine. I seldom go to school. Nobody cares. But instead, you can see me roaming around, standing at the nearby gun. <laughs> Or else, standing beside a jukebox stand, playing the nerve, tickling boogaloo. Those. Those are the reasons why people, you, you, and you, branded me a delinquent. A juvenile delinquent. My parents ignore me. My teachers sleep me. And my friends, they neglected me. One night, I asked my mother to teach me how to appreciate the values in life. Would you care what you told me? Would you care what you told me? Stop bothering me, can't you see? I have to dress up for my mahjong session some other time, my child. Okay, so I turned to my father to console me. But what a wonderful thing he told me. Child, here's 500 bucks. Get it and enjoy it. Go and ask your teachers that question. And in school, I heard not 
nothing, nothing, nothing but the echoes of the voices of my teachers torturing me with his words. Why waste your time studying? <laughs> you can even divide 100 by 5. Go home and plant some sweet potatoes. I may have the looks of Audrey Hepburn and the calmly voice of Natalie Cole, but that's not what you can see in me. Here's a young girl who needs counsel to enlighten her way and guidance to strengthen her life into contentment. Honorable judge, friends, and teachers, is this the girl whom you commented a juvenile delinquent? Good day everyone! In the English language, we usually commit errors in using the prepositions in, on, and at. For today, I'm going to focus my discussion on the use of the prepositions in time expression. What preposition is the most appropriate to use in the following sentences? First, I was born blank 1994. Second, I was born blank December 25, 1994. And third, I was born blank 5 p.m. of December 25, 1994. We should remember that when we use the time expressions, the prepositions in, on, and at, we remember general to specific. In is the most general, while at is the most specific. We use in when we are referring to century, years, months, or weeks. So we say in the 19th century, in 1994, in July, and in two weeks. We use on when we are referring to specific dates, like on December 25, 1994, or when we are talking about the days of the week, like Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, and so on. Lastly, we use at when we are referring to the very specific period such as time. So for example, we say at 5 p.m. of December 25, 1994. Therefore, the correct answers for the sentences that I have presented earlier, we say I was born in 1994. I was born on December 25, 1994, and I was born at 5 p.m. of December 25, 1994. So, we should always remember in, on, and at for time expressions, general to most specific. Thank you and happy Literacy Month! And we shall move to our third contestant from Music Enthusiast with their advisor, Miss Edna Frialde, English teacher, Miss Christelle Ann Oroso. Let us welcome Andrea Perez. Everybody calls me young, beautiful, and wonderful. <laughs> Am I? Look at my hair, my lips. My red rose cheeks and a pair of blinkering eyes. I remember somebody said that I look like my mother. That I look like my mother? But, 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 that was she was young. I'm much lovelier than she is. I'm a mortal Venus. Oops, what time is it? I must get ready for the party. Beep, beep. Aha, here they are. Yes, I'm coming. Child, <coughs> are you still there? Hmm? It's my mama. Child, are you still there? Will you please get me a glass of cold water? Mama, I'm in a hurry. Please, child, 
Try to get me a glass of cold water. Mama, please try to get it on your own. At the party, I danced and danced the whole night. la di da di da la di da di di Suddenly you call my name and I lose my brain and I float up in the moon. You see, I can leave the party at once. I must dance to everybody who proposed to me. At last, the party is over and I'm very tired. Very, very tired. So, I went home to tell Mama what happened. Ma, I'm home. It's very quiet. Ma, I'm home. Nobody answers. I look for her at the sala, but she's not there. Where is she? Aha! Uh -huh, in the kitchen! I saw my mama lying down on the floor then with a glass in her hand. I remember she tried to get it. Oh God! Just for the glass of cold water! Mama! Mama! Oh, Mama! I'm so sorry! How do we know when to use a and an? The rule is very simple. We use a when the following word begins with a consonant. A cat, a car, a skirt, a book. We use an when the following word begins with a vowel. An apple, an eagle, an umbrella, an ostrich. The use of a and an also depends on the sound at the start of the following word. If the following word starts with a consonant sound, then we say a, a European country, a one-day leap, a university. If the following word starts with a vowel sound, then we say an, an honest man, an hour, an FBI agent. That's when we use a and an. Now you know. Thank you, Andrea. I believe you have a reminder for us, Ms. Christelle. Okay, so students, make sure to, to accomplish the Google form pinned in the comment section. It will be closed at exactly 2.55 in the afternoon. Whoever will get the correct answer will receive 200 pesos in his or her GCash account. Okay, so as we proceed, let us now welcome our contestant number four from Pro Life Advocate Advisor, Mr. Jeffrey Jimena, English teacher, yours truly, presenting Kiara Denise Aguana. dagger which I see before me, the handle toward my head, come let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not faith or vision sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation, proceeding from the heat oppressed brain? I see thee yet in form as palpable as this which now I draw. Thou marshalst me the way that I was going, and such an instrument that I was to use. 
eyes are made the fools owe the other senses. Or else worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade and dungeon gouts of blood which was not so before. There's no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. Now, over the one half world, nature seems dead, and wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. Witchcraft celebrates fail Hecate's offerings, and withered murder! Alarmed by Sentinel, the wolf who howls his watch thus with his stealthy pace, with Tarquin's ravishing strides towards his design, moves like a ghost. Thou sure and firm set earth, hear not my steps, which way they walk for fear thy very stones break upon my whereabouts. And take the present horror from the time which now suits with it. Whilst I threat, he lives. Words to the heat of deeds too cold, breath gives. that the blood be pluralized. They are accepted as it is. For example, equipment, luggage, cash, furniture, jewelry. For jewelry, you may say pieces of jewelry, or might as well be particular with ring, necklace, bracelet, and earrings. Wow, Chairman, thank you for that incredibly informative TikTok video. Contestant number five will be next. She's from the a technology competent section with the advisor, Ms. Maria Geraldine Facat, English teacher, Sir Rob Tirados, presenting Daniel Kailan Kiambao. Hey, everybody seems to be staring at me. You! You! All of you! How dare you stare at me! Why? Is it because I'm a bad girl? A bad girl I am? A good for nothing teenager? A problem child? That's what you call me? I smoke. I drink. I gamble at my young tender age. I lie. I cheat. And I can even kill if I have to. Yes, I'm a bad girl. But where are my parents? You! You! You are my good parents? My good elder brother and sister in the society where I live? Look. Look at me. What have you done to me? You have pampered and spoiled me, neglected me when I needed you most. You trusted me to a yaya. Whose intelligence was much lower than mine? Why do you go know watch your parties, your meetings, and gathering sessions? Thus, I drifted away from you. No 
longing for a father's love, yearning for a mother's care. As they grow up, everything changed. You too have changed. You spend more time in your pokers, the drum tables, bars and nightclubs. You even landed on the headline of the newspaper as crooks, peddlers, and raptors. Now, call my name. Accuse me in everything I do to myself. Tell me, how good you are. If you really wish to ensure my future, then hurry. Hurry back home where I await you because I need you. Protect me from all evil influences that will threaten at my very own understanding. Let me find that. Really bad. Then you've got to help me. Help me. Oh, please help me. <laughs> All right. You know what? Those kinds of, you know, declamation pieces, they really kind of make me teary. <laughs> All right. But, you know, they have this bright future ahead of them on acting. And I really am touched by the way they deliver their declamation pieces. They are really, you know, very, very good at it. And now... Let us proceed to another Rebus game! I hope that you are ready again. Because it's me again. And you will be answering again and again and again and again and again. Okay, this is our next Rebus game. Get ready. You have one minute to type down your answers just like earlier. And this is... Rebus 101. Your timer starts now. This one is tricky. So you really have to think what it is, what does it symbolize, and everything that comes along with it. All right, I know that you could do it. Shannons are really good. You are you guys are really great. You think very wisely and you know I am pretty sure that most of you many of our Shannon students will get the correct answer for this one. You still have last 13 seconds to type down your answers on the comment section. So just keep on typing. Keyboard warriors, go ahead. You still have three seconds. And two and one. Time is up. Okay. The correct answer for that one is... Diamond ring. Okay, congratulations to whoever answered it correctly. But before I go out, our winner for the previous rebus, no, our winner for the previous mystery word is... I don't have my SFX, so... Nicole Aquino from Nine Body Smart. Congratulations to you. Keep it up. And... Get your Gcash account ready. And that's it for me. I am 
going out thank you gab you never seem to run out of energy even we are at 3 p.m now so miss Christelle, did you get the last rebus word Oh, you got it. Me, I am a same. I have the same answer with our students. Squid game. That's wrong. They have three shapes. Okay, diamond ring. All right. Now let us all together witness the showcase of talent of the grade nine levels, book spine poetry. We have from Vince Gasses, Hush Hush, Book Spine Poetry, Correction, Hush Hush, Silence. The Fire Within. Under the never say. So let me repeat it again. Hush, hush, silence. The fire within. Under the never say. For the next one, we have the courage to teach people. This one is from Nicola Kino. I think she's the one who won earlier. 
Let me try to read it. But I can't read it. So let's just proceed with the names. This one is from Nicole Aquino. This one is from Andrea Jolie. Whoever you are, you have a beautiful name. It was like the actress, Angelina Jolie. This one I can read. Yeah, and then we also have one from Martina De Leon. The courage to teach people everything. I can't read that part and shift. You know, these kinds of activities and whatever it is, I really am proud of you people who do this kind of things. I can do this. There we have it, ladies and gentle Shannons, our participants for the Book Spine Poetry. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Gab. Unfortunately, we cannot read the titles of some of the books because they are too small, but congratulations for your creativity, Shannons. Congratulations to those students whose book spine poetry were selected and featured in this e-speech festival. Now, we shall proceed to our last but definitely not the least competition. It's time for us to watch in awe as our grade 10 representatives deliver a blisteringly and blistering and timely speech about anti-bullying. Sir Papu, would you like to introduce our first representative? Our first representative is from 10 Critical Thinker. Please welcome Mark Daniel Santiago. What you're about to see in this clip is one of the most infuriating acts a human can do to another human. A concrete example of bullying is shown in this clip. Momentarily, we'll go back to this clip. Bullying can discomfort people or even injure people physically, mentally, or emotionally. It is bullying that the one being bullied may feel degraded, crumbled, shattered, or simply feel that they are not good enough. According to the National Center for Educational Statistics, one out of five students were reported being bullied. Considering the high volume of students in the Philippines, that is a lot of people. If we will stop what bullying brings to these students, these numbers will decrease as time goes on. Now, back to the clip we'll go. Shouts the bully to the boy. The bully implies that he will either punch him or take his dignity away from him. Human dignity does not work as the bully says. Our dignity as a human is always there. God gives us our dignity as a person, so no human can take away another's dignity. Act of bullying is the heaviest act a human can do to violate human dignity. When we violate the dignity of others, we also violate God since we are made in his image and likeness. I do believe that everyone is capable of respecting each other's dignity. What everybody needs are kindness and respect. And always remember, stop bullying. No one deserves to feel worthless. All right. Stop bullying. Let's advocate for that, all right? That is one of the advocacies that we should have as students. Now, I am here again because this would be my last rebus for all of you. Yet, I won't be losing my energy because I really am excited for this one. All right, our next rebus is... No, but before that, let me announce first our winner for the previous game that we have had, the Diamond Ring Word Puzzle. The winner for that is Kathleen Borja from 12 STEM 2. Congratulations to you. We have the same... You have the same, we have the same surname. Yours is your surname and mine is my middle name. But congratulations still. 
All right, this one is my last rebus for all of you. So I want you guys to be attentive, listen, and type down as fast as you could because this would be the last time that you could get that money prize. And I know that many of us needs that, wants that, hungers for that, craves for that. All right, get ready because this is Rebus 101.1. And here it goes. And it's not playing. I hope that you could see it. It is playing. All right, let me let me redo it for all of you. This is our last rebus. All right. Once again, our last rebus. And it really is not showing for me. This is now. Let me just change the rebus. There we have it. I have already fixed it for all of you because I know I love you and I want you to win for this one. Once again, our last rebus. This one is really easy. So I hope that you answer this as fast as you could. In three, two, one, and go. There. You have one minute to answer this one. Then shout out also to our friends over there on the other side of this computer and monitor. Hi to Faye. Hi to everyone. Hi to all of you that are still with us here today until we reach the end of this game. It seems as though many people, many students have answered this correctly. Congratulations. Hi to Ia Marita Uto, to Gabriel Lorenzo, Jello Arevalo, Merheda Villanueva Rica May Alido, and to all of you, congratulations. Thank you for being with us and playing with me today. All right, still have five seconds left and four, three, two, one, and. Dun, 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 dun. Bing, bing, bing. All right, time is up. Our correct answer for that one is there. You have it, ladies and gentlemen. Shannon's Crossroads. That is one of the easiest rebus that we've had for this day. The answer for this one is Crossroads. I will be announcing the winner for this one. Okay. It seems though that we already have a winner for our last rebus, and that is Ivan J. Medina from STEM2. Congratulations! And that's it for me, ladies and gentle Shannons. I am Gab again. Thank you for being with me and playing with me tonight. Thank you again, Gab. And we are on our final stretch of our program. Miss Christelle, what do we have next? Okay, for our last but absolutely not the least among our grade 10 contestant, we have here from Lifelong Learner, please welcome Sophia Zapanta. Good day and blessed be God forever. I am Sophia Faith Zapanta from 10 Lifelong Learner. I like to start this speech with a simple question. Have you ever heard the words, why do you dress like that? You're too fat. Or, you'll be beautiful if you have lighter skin. Anywhere, bullying and discrimination can happen. School, work, social media, or even at home. I have a question for you. 
If you listen to these words, do you think your life would be any better? Oftentimes, we try to fit into the standards of the world. We let ourselves be slaves of people's words. You are the author of your life. Don't let anyone take your pen. That is what I want you to remember. I dream of a world where people value their worth. I dream of a world where everyone realizes that they are worthy of respect, where everyone realizes how significant human dignity is. Whoever you are, no matter where you're from, the color of your skin, how old you are, or your gender identity, speak and stand up for yourself. People see life as a competition. To be successful is what everyone wants. Many people try to be on top and to do this, they try to be better than anyone else. A society with crab mentality is where I grew up where people think blowing out someone's candle will make theirs shine brighter. Bullying is not just teasing. It is a threat. It is abuse, a misuse of power. It is something that our society should not normalize. It is something that should be taken care of and not tolerate. Oftentimes I think, what satisfaction can people get from bullying? There are so many things going on in our world right now. Let's help each other and let's not waste our time in bullying. Ladies and gentlemen, as I stand before you today, I want to tell you that dragging others down will never take you to the top. Once again, I am Sophia Faith Zapanta. Thank you for listening. Okay, to conclude our today's Literacy Month celebration with the theme Literacy. Speech Festival, Literacy for a Human-Centered Recovery, Narrowing the Digital Divide. May we call on Ms. Maria Concepcion Cruz, Subject Area Coordinator of the English Department for our closing remarks. to Miss Connie Cruz closing remarks. How are you feeling, sir, now that we're done, finally? <laughs> I have with me the list of the winners, but before we announce all our winners, once again, here is our subject area coordinator. Miss Maria Concepcion Cruz. The speech fest is a manifestation that language is dynamic. This is the ability to empower its listener and mobilize to a favorable action. As Dominicans of Shellans, we are groomed to be effective communicators of truth. The truth that is Jesus Christ. In our response to the evangelizing mission of the church, we continue to share Christ to others in thoughts, actions, and words. At this juncture, Allow me to thank the people who made this culminating activity of the Literacy Month possible. First, to the class advisors for assisting us in all our efforts. Special mention to the primary level advisors for they facilitated the activity for class. To the SMR team, Mr. Dari Javier, Sir Ferdi Cristobal, Mr. Giancarlo Archivals, Thank you for the consultation sessions and technical support. To you students, for all the entries submitted, especially the speeches, which are our materials today. To our alumni, Mr. John Benny Comilla, our speaker last Wednesday for the grade seven's topic, Barriers to Communication. To Mr. Listaka, who led our opening prayer, and Ms. Christina Flores, our keynote speaker for sharing her testimony.
to the English team for painstakingly doing all the labors and preparations. You made your mama proud. And lastly, to our God Almighty for giving us the grace, talent, skills, knowledge, and wisdom to speak and proclaim his name. May we have done all according to his will for his greater glory. To everyone, let us keep in mind that literacy plays an essential role in the development of competent individuals. Let us do our mission, let us do our share. As Helen Keller said, alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much. Good afternoon and blessed be God forever. Thank you very much, Ms. Connie, for your closing remarks. And now, the moment you have all been waiting for. We will now be announcing the winners. First, for the grade 6 storytelling. Second, runner-up, Ario Inigo Burgos. First, runner-up, Alia May Mariano. And our champion from 6 Courage, Isabella Adesha Dumaraos. Congratulations to the Grade 6 Storytelling winners. Congratulations, Grade 6 champions and winners. Thank you, Sir Papu. Now we shall now proceed to our Grade 7, the Hero in Me champions. Second runner-up from Grade 7, Marian Devotee, Miyu Okamoto. Congratulations, Miyu. First runner-up, from Seven Charity, Lizzie Mejia. And of course, our champion from Grade 7 Service Oriented, Maria Ann Nubid. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations, heroes and heroines. For our Grade 8 Declamation winner, second runner-up, Eliza May Labuguen. First runner-up, Andrea Perez. And your champion from 8 Pro-Life Advocate, Kiara Denise Aguana. Congratulations, my dear grade 8 students. Now we shall now proceed to the grade 11 speech, Gettysburg speech parody. Third runner-up goes to Faye Dominic Telada. Congratulations, Faye Dominic. Second runner-up goes to Enos Ralph Iverson Ong. Congratulations, Enos. First runner-up goes to Roshanda Bidua. Congratulations, Roshanda. And now our champion, Josiah De Vela. Congratulations. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations, Dad. grade 11. And now for our grade 12 speech parody winners. Third runner-up from TVL Culinary One, Rona Gavan. Second runner-up, Yums 2, Maika Juliana Cyril Sion. First runner-up, STEM 5, Estefa Stephanie Villaganes. And our champion from ABM 1, Kyla Marie Reyes. Congratulations. Congratulations, everybody. Now we shall proceed to the winner of our literacy clues. It came from grade 11. Saint Margaret. We have Miguel Malveda. Congratulations, Miguel. And for our last contest, the impromptu speech, our second runner up is from ABM 11 Saint Rose, Sofia Moral. Our first runner up, ABM 11 Saint Rose, Carl Sebastian Hardin. And your champion from STEM 11 Saint Martin. Fria, Andrea, Reyes. Congratulations to all our winners. Congratulations, everybody. We are all proud to be your teachers in your English and reading subjects. Thank you, Miss Christelle. And for the longest time, you have seen the two of us, but there are lots of English teachers yes. who have been with us the whole day. And we would like to call everyone to please come forward. This could have been not possible if without your help. Thank you so much, team. Please welcome our English department. Sir Jude Kabading, 
Miss Teresa Agana, Miss Concepcion Cruz, Miss Christine Belgira, Miss Eliza Rochelle de la Torres, Mr. Jason Arada, Miss Roslyn Estrada, and of course, the birthday celebrant, Mr. Mr. Harvey, Harvey Santana. Santa Ana. Thank you very much. And once again, this has been your host, Sir Papu and Miss Christelle Oroso. Thank you very much for joining us in our eSpeech Festival. We are now signing off. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Truth we seek, 
hear the Spirit bold yet meek, jealous like a blooming rose, like a beauty in repose, like a lily fiery and red, God has gently reared and bred.